Today we are starting our very next rebuild, the Denver Broncos. Here we are with the roster as it is today, or at least for the most part. I try to do the best I can to make this. I know other people make rosters. However, if I use a created roster, I can't start with the draft, and that's the point of this rebuild. So, we are going to show you the roster really fast that we're starting, starting this rebuild with, excuse me. And looking at the team, it ain't great. Obviously, I'm going to move myself over. Uh, you have no quarterback. Jarrett Stidham is not a viable option. J Javante Williams is fine. Corlin Sutton's fine. Marvin Mims is fine. Nothing ecstatic in the offensive weapons group, though, so definitely something we will be looking to change eventually. Greg Dulkic will be fine for now. He's at least got that star dev. The O-line is decent. We probably need to get another center, but other than that, I'm really not upset with this group. I mean, it's not the best, but it's not bad. Going to the defensive side of the ball, we've got issues here. Brandon Jones, P.J. Locke, and who's the other one? There's a missing safety here. Whatever. They're going to be our safeties. Uh, you know, Malcolm Roach comes in. Zach Allen, vastly overpaid. D.J. Jones, is that his name? D.J.? Is that right? D.J.? Yeah, I, I, was, I knew what I was talking about. You didn't. Either way, this team is in a bad spot, to say the least. I mean, we don't have a lot. They do have PS2. That's a great, that's a great place to start. But Riley Moss, you know... Great corner there, sure. Cody Barton, Alex Singleton, Drew Sanders. We might move him around. He might become an edge rusher for us, depending on... He, he's a 71 inside linebacker. I just, I'm just i curious of what he becomes as an edge. In college at Arkansas, he kind of could do both things. Um, so let's see. Going to ratings. He looks like he'll go up. So we are going to move him over. Not to. We're going to move him to left because I believe we already have Benito over there at right. He's going to be our starting edge rusher at this point, in my opinion. Um, just for development purposes. Yeah, he's going to be our left outside guy. Is Cooper better? Maybe. But Cooper, just, you know, I'm not really... Yeah, what are the age differences? That's that's something I'd like to see real fast. i like to, you know, pick out this before. But here we are. Drew Sanders, he's only like 23 maybe. 22, not even that. And then, I guess in real life he's probably 23. But, you know, this is starting a year early, a year late, whatever. That whole situation. He might be 23 by the time the season starts. He's already 26. So within this year, we can definitely get upgrades that make Drew Sanders vastly more worth uh, what it would be to start Cooper. But, you know, we'll have a good three-man rotation. There's no problem with that. So starting the NFL draft, we're going straight into it. And obviously, the, in real life, there's no chance that the Broncos land a top three quarterback. However, in Madden, I didn't change every other team, so... For example, the Bears still have fields because I'm not going to change everything else. Uh, that's just, that's a lot to do. Jared Burst at two, that's insane. Olu Fushano at three, insane. Um, yeah, I fixed my team up. Our team is as it should be in real life. Every other team doesn't really matter that much. However, the draft is going to be pretty wonky. As we've seen, we're at pick seven, and the best quarterback prospect in years is not off the board yet. Brock Bowers goes to the Titans. This is usually the first quarterback, and Caleb Williams does come off the board. Bears second pick. They get Lea Tulatu and Marvin Harrison. Uh, not too bad there, Not, a, but they still got to figure out their quarterback position. Vikings take Drake May. All right, so we are on the board, and I'm going to try to keep this realistic. Obviously, there is one guy on the board that does seem pretty enticing, Jaden Daniels. He's a top five projection, but he's only around one talent. McCarthy, he's around two to three talent. I think we're going to try to trade back about five spots and see what we can do. And land, honestly, either one of those. Because in real life, they're probably not going to land Daniels. But if we can land him in Madden, whatever. But in real life, they're probably going to get J.J. McCarthy. However, he's not ready to be picked yet. We can maybe get some really solid value out of this. So we are going to try to get some offers here. Tariq Woolen? I would love that if I didn't have to give up. I, I need a, another first rounder back. I mean, that pick is almost there. If those were 2024 picks. So we're going to have to make our own trade. We obviously don't have tons of draft capital already, but we'll figure that out. Let's see. Pick 18 would not be too bad. Maybe just a little farther than I want to be. I'm trying to think of a team. Colts would be good. Not moving us back too far. If we can get their first and their second for them to move up three spots, I'll do it. Okay. They're, I'm not going to worry about it too much. A team right around that range, though, we could definitely hit a first and second off of. Jaguars at 17. If I can take their first and second, I'll do it. No, they're not even close to that. They're not up for that at all. No problem there. We'll go 
We need a team right here in the middle. I mean, if the Raiders are willing, I'll take it. Just move back one spot. Even though I'll take a third to move back one spot. And then we can maybe even trade again. I don't know if about that, though. That's too much. Too much happening there. 19's a little far. Just farther than I'm wanting to reach. If the Saints will do it, that'd be great. But, yeah, I didn't think so. 16 would be great. But I want both of those thirds if that's the case. They're not too far off. I'll do it. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can, man. 20 is going to be too far off. I know that. 23 is too far. All right. Who was that team? Was it the... There was somebody with like 18. I think it was the Colts? 15? No. I'm not sure. I've already forgotten. Great. Who is at 18? Bengals. Okay. We'll see. If I can get there first and second, I'll do it. So we find our trade. We send Jonathan Cooper, our first, and a third in two years for the first, second, and third rounder from the Rams. Excuse me. That is the 19th pick, so hopefully we land our guy. But, you know, Jaden Daniels might be gone. I think we'll get to still have the chance at what's his name, though, at J.J. McCarthy. Who is Jaden Daniels goes to the Raiders. Uh, you know, and it's okay because McCarthy, let's be honest, the chance that Jaden Daniels is even at 12 is just not happening. So, we're making this as realistic as possible. Pain. Well, here we are. And our quarterback went off the board. Wonderful. Roma Dunze is still here. Get a really good receiver. Bo Nix would be my next quarterback option. I don't think Penix is very... Bo Nix is very Drew Brees-like. He might be just the guy to go for. His awareness is C. That means his, his overall is going to be low, but... I don't know how long we can wait on him is the problem. I might try to trade back one more time. Just get a decent drop back just so we can get, you know, at least capable value for this dude. Like a first and a second, moving back about seven spots would be great. So I accidentally forgot to show you who I traded with. It was the Buccaneers. It was, I believe, their first, third, and seventh or something like that. Just for my first pick. Not a bad trade there. And Bo Nix is going to stay on the board. We're going to go ahead and take him because we just don't have another option. And I don't want to wait too long and lose out on a guy. We need a quarterback for the future. And Bo Nix could potentially be that. He has no dev trait. 84 acceleration. Wow, that looks nothing like Bo Nix. Um, yeah, 84 acceleration, 79 change of direction, 85 speed, 90 throw power. He, he's got some solid measurables and different numbers there. So we'll see what we can do. Let's go straight up to round two. We're not worried about anything else here. At our first pick. Troy Franklin's still here. A lot of receiver options for sure. Definitely possible for that. We could get a receiver as well. Uh, or I said that already. A corner as well. Excuse me. Um, trying to see if there's anybody down the board that is just very... It would be nice to have another linebacker. That definitely wouldn't be bad. Mike Sanders still would be really nice for us. However, I think we can wait on him. I think we're going to go potentially to Christian Haynes. I think that's just going to be the best pick. He can move over to center for us. And he's one of the better interior low linemen in this class. He does have a hidden dev trait. That's going to be a big bonus for us. That looks more like Christian Haynes than Bo Nix look like Bo Nix. Either way. Um, we're going to go. We don't. We have a pick just a few picks away. Only about 15 picks down the board. Christian Mahogany goes to the Patriots. They are really functioning that O lineup. Tez Walker would be a nice add here. But we have drafted him before once again. Looks like... Jalen Polk is gone. Not sure if I really care about receiver that much right now. We do have Tim Patrick as well. It's just, he's, you know, it's Tim Patrick. Cool. Theo Johnson is a massive athlete, dude. He would be very interesting here. But I think we might need to go with Sanders still if he's still here. Yeah, we're going that route. He is a dog of a corner. It could be really good in that slot position for us. Got a hidden dev trade. That's going to be a big bonus as well. Not a bad pick. So far, I'm really actually not upset with this draft class at all. We're going to pick once again, just about seven picks down the board. Uh, maybe eight or nine, whatever that is. Blake Corum goes to the Raiders. There, Josh Jacobs replacement. Very interesting. Lots of receivers still on the board. Getting a little bit more interesting as we go. Luke McCaffrey, a lot of O-linemen. How good is Zach Zinter in this class? I've actually not seen him at all in this class. Good speed, good and great. You know, we see decent stuff there. Oh, wow. He might be worth it. His run blocking isn't the best, but everything else, he might be worth it. We, we'll check on him in a moment. 
Tight end. This would be the time to go with tight end if we're going to do it. Probably Theo Johnson would be my guy. Big old tight end. We don't really have the best. He has really good speed. 4-6 speed. Yeah, we're going Theo Johnson. He looks like he could be a massive weapon for us. Literally. 6'6 six six and like 270 or whatever it is. Massive player. We're going to go four picks back. We're going to just go pick by pick here because I'm kind of... Zach Zinner just went off the board. Great. That's exactly what I was going to say. Jonah Ellis was still on the board. I didn't even know that one was there. That's on me. That would have been a really solid pickup as well. Ricky Pearsall goes to the Bengals. That is a very interesting signing for them, or draft pick for them. Tez Walker still being here is very enticing. I do like that one a lot. What are we looking at in D-line? Nothing there. Nothing there. Leonard Taylor's still there. Mason Smith's still there. Oh, man. Trevin Wallace could be decent. He looks like he could be decent, at least. Trotter's still here. That's always a good one. Cedric Gray's a good one. Those are both day three guys, though. Um, Jalex Hunt, not super interested in him here. No, I just don't think it's worth it. I would double dip at corner if I saw somebody worthwhile. However, I mean, Josh Newton with that zone coverage is really solid, but we just already drafted a slot guy. We don't need that. If anything, we need another outside guy to play with PS2. Man coverage could potentially be A with Kalen Carson. we got to keep an eye on him. I don't think we're going there. I think receiver might be the pick here. We, we've waited long enough, and we've gotten about everything else. Who are the running backs left, just in case? Will Shipley, Jonathan Brooks is still here. That's Those are both really solid backs. Bucky Irving, even. Cody Schrader. I know he's last for a while, so I'm not going to be worried about him. We might look at running back next round. But right now, it's about which receiver we want. Jalen McMillan could still be decent. He's around 2 to 3 projection. All these guys are around 2 to 3 projection. Xavier Leggett, that brings a very big. He kind of sounds like this when he talks. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to go with him. He just kind of is a. Well, he's kind of the Cortland Sutton mold. So maybe not, actually. I forget we have him. We might go Tez Walker. I know we did him last rebuild as well. No, he, he wasn't the best overall. I'm trying. I don't think I've ever drafted Jermaine Burton. Let's see what he does. Let's see what he looks like. Nothing special athletically. Really solid, though. The injury is a bit concerning, but he's got really good routes. That's kind of the kind of receiver we need. You know, an outside do-it-all guy. We'll take him. 91 speed. That looks pretty solid, actually. I've not taken him before. We actually picked another time in this round. We'll maybe look at a running back here. If Jonathan Brooks is available, I don't know if I can pass him up. To me, him and Trey Benson are my one and two. Benson's definitely gone. Jonathan Brooks is still here. Let's see. Let's see what he looks like. He's going to have some injury things, I bet. Great speed. He runs a 4.37 in this. Injuries to C to F. Awareness is A to C, though. I'm going to go with Jonathan Brooks. He could be a really good option for us. Hidden dev trade. That might be a very good pick. Uh, just might be. We got a ton of picks in this draft class, so we might be able to get a really solid roster built up off of this. I think we're going to look at linebacker or D-line now. We kind of just need to. We've waited long enough, and, I mean, they weren't the best prospects, but at this point, we just need somebody. Jalex Hunt's still there. Eichenberg's still there. Trotter and Cedric Gray both got off the board before Eichenberg, who was ahead of them. We might look at him. Let's see. We do kind of need a position. He has some decent things. Poor speed. He's not really... Block shedding is A. Zone coverage is B. Tackles B. A to C man coverage. Injury's bad. Power moves and finesse moves are not necessarily good. We'll go with him. He, he could be all right. Might be a bust of a pick, but we need the position and depth at this point is going to help enough. We're not, we literally, we have gone back maybe like 10 picks for the last six rounds. Like we have like hardly moved down yet. We keep getting picks not too far away. And I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but whatever. Could double dip at quarterback, Ted Rax. Uh, <laughs> that said Quinn Utry. I, I wonder what that's supposed to be. I actually would not be upset with double dipping at running back. But at the same time, we got two guys who could both potentially be very good players. Not really. Dallin Holker had a really good combine. Um, great speed, great strength. I like that. Injury's bad. Awareness is really good, though. 6'5", 240. Interesting size there. We haven't taken too many O-linemen. Let's see who's available. Bo Limmer still here. We could go with him. Just get another center prospect that we maybe can sit around and wait on uh, if, if, if the other option doesn't work. Left tackles, was there anybody worth it? No. 
Lyndon B. Johnson, the future president of the United States, was actually there. Uh, Bo Limmer is going to be ours. One of the better center prospects in this class. I mean, in like the mid-tier at least. I don't know how good he is in this draft class. I've not used him. We're also going to just go five picks down and we'll have another pick. We're making, and we have another pick in two picks after that. That's insane. Johnny Wilson could be a nice ad. He's 6'7", 240. But Jalen McMillan being here, if he, he's got that speed, doesn't he? He's actually not nearly as fast as I expected. Johnny Wilson, is he any, he actually is faster potentially. Jalen McMillan, they both have really bad awareness. Jalen McMillan just looks like a really good prospect. 92 speed, 92 acceleration. We're going with him. Too easy of a pick there, honestly, with the with the letter grades involved. Going to the next pick. We just kind of are going to go best player available from here on out. Malik Washington would be nice. Josh Newton. Kalen Carson's still here. Actually, really kind of like that potential. A good ball hawk. He's got good cover abilities. Awareness is good. Tackle's bad, but he's a corner. Injury's not the greatest, but we're still going there. 90s in five different stats. That's really solid. Kalen Carson might be a very solid player for us. Not to mention the desperation of the pick. We're not even leaving this round before getting another pick. Josh Proctor goes off the board to the Titans. It's a solid pick for them. We're not wor worried about another receiver, that's for sure. Brennan Jackson, he has at least potential to have decent finesse. Moves. I like Christian Jones. That looks pretty decent. And Sato, not even going to try it. Never mind. Um, we might look at him a little further. Impact blocking and injury are both A. He's decent on his blocking, actually. Oh, is he better? No, he's not. We're going to go with Christian Jones. Take a chance on a tackle. Terrible athleticism, but very solid strength. 88 already as a rookie, a late-round rookie at that. We're going to go almost to the very end of the draft until we pick again. Free cap. We're going to jump into that really fast. Get this out the way. Bo Nix is 71. You know, actually, probably about what I expected. Not too bad. Christian Haynes is solid. Mike Sanders still solid. Theo Johnson's decent. Burton's decent. Brooks is really solid. I like that. So that was going to be a really good turnout for us. 75, he has a dev trait. Eichenberg is decent. Limmer could be better. McMillan's decent. Carson's decent. Christian Jones and Makai Wingo could be better, but they're depth pieces. So actually not too upset with this draft. We're going to see if we can figure out a way to get some of those free agents, but I don't know if we can. Either way, I'll let you know. So here we are at the start of the next season, week one. I'm going to show you exactly what our depth chart does look like, if I can remember how to get there. Uh, this is what we're going to go with. So quarterback is going to be Bo Nix. Jonathan Brooks is going to play some. Corlin Sutton, Marvin Mims in one and two. Then Jalen McMillan, then Burton. Um, after that, Bo Limmer is going to start for us. Miners and Haynes. I I'd rather just get rid of Ben Powers. I'll do that eventually. Uh, I just feel like it's not even worth it. He's paid way too much to be playing. Uh, and he's not even that good. Then, Zach Allen. We bring in Fletcher Cox for the mentor role for Makai Wingo. DJ Jones. Sanders still is our CB2. Damari Mathis, Riley Moss, Kalen Carson. Really solid group there. Uh, Brandon Jones. Caden Stearns will be our starting free safety whenever he's not injured. But for now, it's PJ Locke. This is kind of just what it looks like. Drew Sanders, Baron Browning. Uh, special teams, we did bring in Luke McCaffrey as just a depth piece um, as a free agent. Very nice ad there. Specialists, the ends, you know, it's all kind of the same, really. We do get Jonathan Brooks in third down back packages, slot receiver Marvin Mims, and then Jermaine Burton. This is what we're going to go with. Um, I think it's going to be the best fit for us and give us the best chance to win. Practice squad, some, you know, potential prospects. The last two are Andrew Booth and Dwight McGlothern. Um, but yeah, some potential prospects for us to develop and work on throughout the rest of the season. Either way, let's get Simmon. In week seven, we are three and three. Actually, a little better than I expected. Third in our division. Breakout linebacker we have here. I know Drew Sanders did get hurt for a while. Nick Benito. That's big for us because would he jump up to superstar? I think that's a superstar upgrade. If he jumps up to superstar, we're going to have some, some special things happening. Uh, rivalry rematch with the Chiefs. I mean, I don't expect us to win this at all. Period. End of story. But, you know, we don't want to lose. We'd like to win. However, it's not going to happen. Um, we get a lot of bonuses, but it probably is going to be all for naught as we're going to more than likely lose to a team that's just substantially better than us. Not to mention, it's in the rain. So, that's a big one as well. Um, 
preparing for conditions like that. We got to go. Oh, that's from last week. Never mind. We did fine. We got 1,000 XP for whoever. Everybody, maybe? I don't know. Either way. Um, we're going to go ahead and make sure things are upgraded. And then we're going to look at a couple trade options because I just feel like we need to do that. There are a couple guys on this team that are either kind of just wasting away or something like that, and they just don't need to be here. One of them being Ben Powers. The other one being Ben Powers. Is that right? Something like that. The other one being... Tim Patrick. We don't really need either of them. More, They're both costing us way more money than we are using them. Tim Patrick only has a year left anyways. And then Ben Powers has three years left, but at $15 million cap it. Like, that's absurd. Absolutely ridiculous. We can get Jawan Jennings in a seventh. Honestly, I'd take it just to get off the money. However, I'm not going to do that because I'd rather keep a few more options open. The Bengals, honestly... Like, I'd rather get some picks or something out of this. If we can get a second, that would be more than enough to make me happy. We got a second. That was easy. I should have shot for a first and saw what happened. Either way, that's going to do it for us. Now we're going to go pick up a couple free agents just to fill in the holes. Um, I'm not really needing a receiver. Honestly, I'm better off getting, like, maybe another linebacker. And this plus the mentor would really help, actually. We're going to do that. Kyle Van Noy, welcome to the squad. And then we will grab an you know, O-lineman, excuse me, just because... Losing an option is, is a thing. You know, you don't want to do that all the time. Um, see if we got anybody with, like, you know, a young player or something. 22, Sam Dresh, Drescher. Something like that. Will Clapp has been signed. While we're here, we have some negotiations to check in on. Quinn Miners is a guy that needs to come back, period. Five years instantly, no doubt about it. Um, he's starting to like the offer. We'll see. We'll get him back one way or another. Like, Javante, I, I might want to just trade him. If Jonathan Brooks is as good as he might be, we might just need to go ahead and trade him. Uh, Baron Browning at this number is absolutely ridiculous. We need to make sure he's locked in now. I'll give up to four. Good deal. He's locked in. That's a steal. Caden Stearns, not the best player, but... Not the worst either. And at that number, you can't really go around it. We're going to take that. Those cap hits being low and long term will help us a ton. Luke McCaffrey, just bring him back, period. I'm going to give him seven years. He's going to be on this team for forever. We're going to give him that. He's here forever. Never going to worry about that position ever again. Uh, DJ James, another guy. We're going to do probably the same thing. Super young. He'll be 28 when this contract expires in six years. And he'll probably accept it. Okay, what's the, the salary to be increased a little bit? I can do that for a couple hundred thousand dollars. No deal. Uh, no no problem with that. We're going to bring back just depth. Just pure depth. Honestly, we don't really need Darius Rush, so I'm not super pressed on that one. Malcolm Roach, I'll give him a two-year. Try to bump that down a little bit. And if he takes that, he wants the bonus to be a little higher. We'll see. I don't know, bud. Don't get, too, don't get your hopes up, please. Uh, Will Clapp is here for now. I don't know. He might leave this year. Fletcher Cox, we're not resigning. Van Noy, we're not resigning right now. Cameron Dicker, let's just give him a deal. Like, we don't care. It's a kicker. Who cares? Um, he'll reconsider that. And we're still going to have a ton of money left over after this. Um, after this, I, I don't really see anybody else I'm super worried about. Garrett Bowles, is he worth it? I'm going to let him probably play out this season. Now it's time to check on Javante Williams. What are we looking like? What are our stats looking like with these guys? Halfway through the season, Bo Nix is fourth in passing yards. That is not bad, man. Javante's doing pretty good. But so is Jonathan Brooks. I think it's very worth it to probably go ahead and move off of Javante. There's not really a big reason to pay him. And especially with Jonathan Brooks coming up, it'll be better off on us to go ahead and get rid of him now. So let's see what that looks like. Let's see what we can get for Javante Williams. If there's any solid players out here. Tajay Spears on the block. I like that, but we don't need a running back. Any good tight ends? Eh, I'm not super worried about it. Nothing here. Now, a defensive lineman, a solid defensive lineman, could be a very big addition for us. Do we have an available one? Doesn't look like it. Malcolm Rodriguez would be decent, but nothing special. JC Jackson, still a star dev. He's making $14 million. That's a bit more than I want to spend on him. Yeah, I'm not going to see anything I like here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just straight up try to offer what we can for, you know, Javante. Young player. He is solid, but Jonathan Brooks just might be better. Period. End of story. Kyrie Elam would be a nice add to a CB room. 
Travis Jones would be a really solid pickup as well. A solid young D tackle, like a good young guy. Um, yeah, that might be the route we go. Rashad Bateman would be interesting, but I'm just not really loving it. If I can get a little bit be of a better pick, Kyer Elam, Travis Jones, both good options. What am, I, what am I looking at here with this Travis Jones deal? Oh, I can't even accept it, so never mind. It's That's so stupid. Why would you do that? We do need some interior D linemen. So let's see if we can find something down that route. Eric Armstead for a one-year, $25 million. I think I'm good. Thanks, bud. Um, Braden McGregor, Connor's son. Uh, no. Uh, let's see. D-tackle, let's go there. If I can get Byron Murphy, dude, I would take that in a heartbeat, but there's just no way. Yeah, not even close. Not even a little bit. Okay. Let's see who liked Javante. Anybody specifically liked Javante Williams? I think I just saw somebody who did. The Ravens need him. I'm okay with that. They might have some options for us. Maddie Buike, please. No, not happening. Okay. Jazan Newton would be decent. If they would give me Newton, I will absolutely deal that. Salary cap issue so far. How close are we, though? Just show me how close we are, and maybe we can make something work here. David Ojabo, he's kind of been a bust in his career so far. Probably not a good guy to pair him with. He might be still too young to really make that offer work. Rocky Sin making $4 million a year. What are they doing? We're going to go just to like the bottom of their roster just to see Josh Ross, Cameron Warber. He's got a star dev as a quarterback. We'll take it. Okay, I think we can make this work. Give him a pick. We have two seconds. We have two sixes. We have two fourths this year. We'll throw in one of those or two sevens. That's about all I want to do right now. I might consider a second, though. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a second. We're not going to really need it anyways, and that's a really good player. Yeah, Jerzon Newton's coming in. He's going to be a very good player for us, probably long-term as well. Um, definitely not upset about that at all. And we get the quarterback who is going to be better than our backup already, and he is a dev trade. So, big deal. Um, that's, a, that's a good one. Either way, moving forward, we're going to have to get another running back on the roster, but honestly, I'm not even going to worry about that right now until somebody gets hurt. Week 14 rolls around, and we are hot garbage, 5-7. and seven. However, breakout wide receiver, breakout quarterback. Big deal happening. All right, let's check it out. That's a big deal because he is normal dev. Bo Nix is coming off a stellar game. I don't know what he did. Haven't really looked. One or fewer interceptions, 300 yards, or total touchdowns, and increase the depth rate to star would be massive for us. Now, what is our receiver? Is this, I hope it's Mims or, oh shoot, I can't see, or McMillan maybe? Marvin Mims. That would get him to superstar. That would be huge because that would make a very, very good receiver quarterback pairing. Uh, not to mention just a really good player. We're going to check in some negotiations real quick, but while we're here, we're going to do a few things while we're here. Quinn Miners, we almost had a deal. I'm going to give him like that right there. Money isn't right. Okay. All right. I don't know. He, uh, he, he, the team isn't right. Excuse me. Uh, Cameron Warber, a backup quarterback at 60 overall with a star dev. I, I know he's going to lose it. Walla Walla University. Um, he, yeah, we're keeping him around as long as possible for nothing money. That's always the best way to go with these things. Uh, once again, this guy, he's just going to get a little bit more, and he's going to be here forever. Not a bad thing for us. Darius Rush, I don't know if we're going to be able to keep him. Four years, though. Yeah, I, we might just let him go. I'm not really interested in giving him tons of money. It's just not really in my, you know, doesn't seem worth it to me. Malcolm Roach is a really good depth piece. He is worth keeping around. We have a ton of money. Uh, DJ Jones, probably not worth it. For twenty a 29-year-old at 73, he might even regress. Probably not worth it. Kyle Van Noy, not worth it. Dicker, we'll give him a contract just because he's a kicker. You always need a kicker. I'm going to even bump it up to seven years because they're never going to be bad. He's going to be here forever. We don't have to worry about the position. Good enough to me. And, like, we've hardly lost any money. At this point, we're going to let Van Noy, probably Dixon, and Cox go. Will Clapp might let be let go. Will, Matt Pert might be let go. I don't know. We'll see in a minute. But we got to check out this breakout game. However, before that, we need to go scout some players. I have still kind of focused on those quarterbacks available a little bit. A.J. Manning is top five projection, but only third to fourth round talent. He actually sucks. He's actually terrible. What a what a just loss. He didn't even look that bad. He's just a lot of Bs. I guess he's just very average. Colin Christensen, 
80% scouted. Round one projection, but we'll see about that. Um, definitely going to be interested in the receivers a little bit. We do have uh, some of those getting scouted. We also have some corners getting scouted. Uh, we need both of those positions pretty well. Cortland Tompkins looks pretty solid. Can you get two Cortlands on the same team? Linebackers, I don't really know what if we have much coverage here in terms of scouting. We have a couple guys. Javier Delgado, pass coverage guy. That would not be bad for us at all. Round one, J.J. McCollum, 75% completion. Let's see what we're looking at with him. Uh, he looks pretty solid, actually. A power move, C finesse moves, B awareness, B impact blocking. Uh, block shedding's a C. Injury's not great, but, you know, it, it's okay. Let's see if we can find some DN stuff. Um, yeah, power moves is decent, you know. Some things. There's some things. Uh, block shedding's not very good for Newton. Kenny Whitaker. Block shedding's really good, but moves aren't that great. And we'll see here, a top five guy, 75% completion, Sean Rudd. He looks really good. Block shedding ain't great, but the moves are both very good. Injury's very good. Tackle's very good. Player X very good. Awareness is very good. We got a good, we got, Sean Rudd might be a guy to take if we land in the top five. Vernon Wiley also looks pretty decent. Block shedding could be better, but the moves are both, uh, power moves aren't great. What's his strength and size? He's, he's a little undersized. He's fine though. We could find better. Um, and in terms of maybe tackles, I don't think we have much scouting done there, but you can at least see players are pretty solid. So that's a little scouting, just brief. We'll, we'll do some more later. Sean Rudd is kind of our target if we land anything high, which we might at this point. Either way, let's see if we can get these breakout games. This is going to be huge for us one way or another. Breakout player, this is the receiver. He did not get it done today. I'm not surprised, honestly. Did we win that game? If we didn't win, it might be hard to even get anything. We did win, 21 to 14. Bo Nix might not have gotten this. I don't know. This is a little bit short. He made it known that he hoped to have a better day. All right, well, we didn't get that. That stinks. Major upset there. But we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do. Either way, let's keep simulating the rest of the season. So we end our season, and Jonathan Brooks did miss like the last like five games, and... Nick Benito has a brand new injury of eight-week injury. Not great either way, but we did not make the playoffs. We were 7-10. and 10. Not the worst, but we could have been better. We got our contract extended. That's good enough. Um, we're on to the next season, essentially. We're going to go week by week here just to make sure we don't miss anything, but I really don't think anything's going to happen. I don't think anything can happen. One good side of things is we... Don't, you know, we didn't really expect to win. We just had a really good year of development, and that's kind of all I was hoping for. But now, Bengals and Cowboys. We traded Tim Patrick to the Bengals. Uh, that's that's pretty big. Uh, yeah, so interesting. Very interesting they make it this far. Uh, will they win? Probably not. The Cowboys, for some reason in this game, are absolutely redonkulous, and they win everything for absolutely no reason. So, going out of the Super Bowl, they do lose, thankfully. That's awesome. Season recap, let's check it out. Do we get anything? No, we don't. Joe Burrow wins MVP. I'll jump over here. And Dak Prescott gets league MVP. McCarthy is the head coach of the year. Micah Parsons, Drake May rookie of the year. Jared Verse, defensive rookie of the year. Very nice season. Um, and we did better than I expected. I should have put us seven wins, but I didn't. Either way, retirements. Do we have anybody leaving our team from that route? Uh, Brandon Graham did retire. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got some big names leaving. Brandon Graham, Levante David, Taylor Lewan, James Harris, Cameron Jordan. Matthew Stafford, Russell Wilson, Jimmy G, Pat Pete, Bobby Wagner, Aaron Rodgers, Corey Lindsley, Jordan Poyer. No, not Logan Thomas. Yeah, all right, whatever. But a lot of retirements, big time retirements. There is going to be a lot of needs this season that somebody's got to figure out, and it ain't me. I got my own things to worry about, bud. Either way, we get a lot of guys. I brought in a lot of guys on the practice squad, young prospects that are going to be very good additions to this roster. Cam Jurgens, Dorian Williams, um, some very good people to pick up right here, right now. And now we're in our scouting phase. I don't know exactly what we're going to be looking for, where we're going to be drafting, but AJ Manning is terrible. Um, Jamie Buchanan, he's like that bigger six foot three, two thirty. He's obviously going to be very good. If you've been around Madden for more than four seconds in the last two years. 
if they look like that, they're going to be really good. It'd be great to get him, but at 7 and 10, we're not landing that first pick, and I'm not wasting it to trade up to a receiver. I I'm just not. Bo Nix might be our quarterback of the future. He might not. We're going to go to re-sign players and make sure we get some of our guys back. Uh, Quinn Miners is one that we never ended up getting back, but he's going to be on this roster, no doubt about it. Franchise tag or whatever it takes. Um, yeah, just mock draft three. Here's That's big. That way we can see where we're drafting. And that'll be Sean Ru the the Browns that high. Then the Cardinals. The, all right, where are we at? Who cares? We're all the way up at 13. I am actually, Jamie Buchanan is projected to be right here. That is insane. Colin Christensen, here is the quarterback. I mean, I'm probably going to stick with Bo Nix, but this guy looks pretty decent. He looks pretty decent. I don't know. If he's there, if we have a chance, maybe. You know, if I feel like there might be a dev trait involved, maybe. But at this point, I don't think so. We got to negotiate contracts. We got to fill out this roster before we get to the draft. Miners has to come back, period, end of story. We're going to give him a friendly offer, a player-friendly offer, whatever it means. We'll give him that right there. He's, he's coming back. No doubt about it. Good deal. We're not even losing much money. Garrett Bowles, it's a lot of money. It is. It's a lot of money. I don't know about that, man. I'll give you this, Darius. He wants to leave. That's fine with me. Have at it, bud. Uh, I'm not really interested in bringing back Samaj P. Ryan, especially for that number. DJ Jones is regressing. We're not going to bring him back. Uh, Matt Pert, we might bring him back just as a depth piece, just because one year, that number is nothing, really. And he's a really solid backup, except he doesn't want to be here. Never mind. I don't want to bring him back anyways. Riley Dixon. I'll probably just go sign a younger punter for a longer time. Kyle Van Noy is worth nothing now. If he's still got that mentor badge, yeah, I'll, I'll bring him back for a year. If he's willing to be here at that number, okay, never mind. Um, didn't want to bring him back anyways. Either way, yeah, I think that's about it. Garrett Bowles, that's tough, man. We might let him hit free agency and maybe scoop him back up later. He does want to be here. We'll go team friendly here, and if he takes it, he... I don't even like that, though. Honestly, I'm going to let him hit the market, and if he takes it, if we find another option, I just don't really like the the eight. Was he 30? I don't know. If he's just 30, it may not be that bad. He's 33. Never mind. Yeah, we're going to let him hit the market. Maybe we'll find a better one out there, and we're going to get to free agency. At the end of our free agency, we do bring in, uh, let's see where some of these big players went. Nick Chubb to the Patriots, Drake Greenlaw to the Vikings, Tron Johnson to the Commanders. Lucia Cormel, Greg Newsome. You're seeing them there. You see it. You got eyes, I bet. Uh, my signings. Deion Dawkins, big-time addition. Ryan Stonehouse, good addition. Ricard, decent. We didn't pay him much. Jermont Jones, Amenahu, and Robinson. We get Robinson in really just to be a mentor, have that little tag, and help out. We do still have $40 million available. Um, that's awesome for us, but at the same time, we're not really worried about it. Um, before I do this, actually, before the private workouts, I'd like to go and check out what we're looking at potentially getting. From the most recent mock draft, mock draft five, the final one. This is usually pretty accurate to what things look like. Sean Rudd is out of our wheelhouse for sure. Um, Alfonso Baptiste. He looks like a really good corner, but we just don't have the ability to get there. No doubt about that. Um, where are we at? Dwayne Meeks. There we go. Jamie Buchanan is down here. That's interesting. Very interesting. He might be available. He might be within reason too. I don't know. We're going to take a few shots at things here, and we'll just see what happens. Um, just go ahead and put in our private workouts. I might have to do that. I'm going to look at the other quarterback for sure, just to make sure that he's not just actually really good for some reason. And then we want Jamie Buchanan. We want Colin Christensen, and we want... Was it Vernon Wiley? Was that the one that we were looking at? This receiver from Arkansas looked pretty decent. I remember he was up there. We'll take him. We'll just see. Random players. Here we are at the start of the NFL draft. We're going to get right into this. We are not questioning anything. Uh, first off. Yep, he does go. Okay, had to make sure because he might have been worth moving up. He looked really, really good. Uh, other than that, Jamie Buchanan does go right in front of us. We just don't need the receiver that bad. It's okay. Colin Christensen is here. He was the guy I'd consider. But I don't think he's worth the difference. Uh, at this point, I really think it's cornerback or bust. So, who should we go? Um, Quincy Drummond, he's top five projected. Still here. Solid speed, nothing crazy. A catching, A hit power, A tackle, C injuries, meh, meh, you know, whatever. Um, he's 22. Ben Murphy, 22. 
looks a lot worse. Not worried about him. I see a lot of good things here as well. C injury. Uh, a man. A man is really good. B zone. A man and B zone is really good. What was the first one? Was his A, a man B zone? B A. I'd rather have the man up though. Corlin Tompkins looks like he might be the guy. Really fast. Elite. Good speed. Elite agility. Reggie Tompkins. Didn't realize that they were the same last name. Corlin Thompson, Tompkins, 6'3", 210. That's like number one corner type stuff, man. Mm. What are there, is there an age difference between Drummond and Tompkins? That's what we're looking at now. If I can press the right button. 22 here. Cortland Tompkins, 22. Reggie Tompkins, 22. Really not that different. I think we're going to go with Quince. Wait, was he the Wait, I can't remember now. He's got B and A. He's got A and B. We're going to go with Cortland Tompkins. Hidden dev trait, excuse me. Uh, and 92 speed, 91 acceleration, 92 agility, 88 change direction, 89 jumping. Very solid prospect. Let me jump myself right back over here. So you can see a little bit of our draft class. All right, we get, we didn't even change anything. We moved like one pick instead back. We're gonna try to get Kellum, the safety named Kellum. He's gonna get traded or picked right before us. Watch. Colin Christensen lasts all the way to the second round. Probably good that we didn't take him when we did then. Tompkins is still there. One of the Tompkins is, and he's gone. That stinks. Very bad. All right. He probably was very good, and that's why he went in the first round. We do need a center if we find one. That guy has two A's and two B's, potentially. Run block finesse ain't great. Injury's not great. Eh, finesse ain't there, but he could be decent. We'll keep an eye on him. He's, he's around two to three. I mean, could we double dip at corner? Jalil Hood does it. He has A zone. I don't know. I'm just not really loving anything I'm seeing right here. What do we have in our linebacker positions? Mm, Emmanuel Banks looks decent. So does Kaysen. But both these guys are 34. We're not worried about that. Let's go to IOL. We got our D-line pretty good. I'm just not seeing anything. I don't know. The center position might be good. Let's see. Thomas Burton. We don't have... Bo Limmer. I was going to keep him, but like, if we can upgrade him, we can upgrade him. Three A's. Two C's. Bad injury. One, two, three A's. Potentially more A's. So this guy's better. There's a lot more A's on that screen. There's four potential A's here for Thomas Burton. But for Duggan, there's one, two, three, four, five, six potential A's. We're going to go with Duggan. He might be decent. Hidden dev trait. 88 strength. Looks pretty decent to me. I'll take it. Might be our new starting center. You can never have enough O-linemen. Ever. No doubt about that. Going all the way to the third round. We are a lot shorter on picks this time around. I think those linebackers. Let's see if any of them are still there. Doesn't look like it. Not anybody that I'm loving. Linebackers. Oh, wait. Now, here they are. All of them. They were all right here. So, this guy, he might be more of a middle for us. He's 21 years old. Elite speed. Elite jumping. Power moves aren't great, so he's definitely an off-ball backer. A, awareness is really good. B, playback's really good. B, tackle's really good. Emmanuel Banks. Elite speed, also. Pursuit and hit power are both A's. Injury's decent. Tackle's good. Power moves is bad. Finesse moves is not great. He's also off-ball. Six foot two forty, six foot two thirty. He's a year older though. And Kyrie Cox also that year older. Elite speed as well. <laughs> hit power is good. Block shedding is good. This guy could do a little bit of both maybe. Eh, you'd still want him off ball. Hit power is good. He looks like the worst of them though. I see the hit power pursuit zone coverage tackle is not for sure. Emmanuel Banks tackle hit power pursuit are all A's. 
John Kaysen, awareness is an A. Hit power pursuit might be, tackles less. I think Emmanuel Banks is our guy. I like the size he has, 87 speed, 89 agility. Looks like he's going to be a pretty solid player. Not upset about that at all. We needed a linebacker anyways. Maybe keep Eichenberg off the field, but hey, it's at least depth. Trent Bolden from Montana goes to the Lions. Let's see what we got here. I wonder if any of those guys are still there. We can double dip it. Running, oh, no, linebacker. No, we took Banks. That's a different Banks. Okay. I about got really confused there. Antoine Turner looks really good. What in the world? Another linebacker. He's a little undersized. I didn't like that. Zone coverage is good. Injury's bad. Not good at all. Let's see what we got in the cornerback room. Zone coverage is an A with Latavius Jones, but I just I don't care about that enough. I'd really rather see man coverage be like a B or an A. I don't really like anybody here. The safety position, do we have anybody else? Harold Gardner looks okay. Man coverage is a B, zone coverage potentially be good. Just not enough there to me to make it matter. Not enough. Check out a couple extra positions. We took a tight end last year. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know at all. What's the receiver room look like? I don't just don't see anything I care about. I don't know. Maybe we just trade our picks. At the end of our draft, we have taken three players. Tompkins, he's a 76 overall. He'll be a starter for us. Duggan, Dugan, whatever you want to call him, center, 76 overall, our new starting center. And Emmanuel Banks is a 74 outside linebacker. We're going to move him to the inside as that's just what we need more. Um, he was 74. Hopefully he goes up when we move him to middle. Um, he will actually go down just a hair, but that's okay. We need him there anyways. He'll play over Alex Singleton still. Uh, just because of Alex Singleton's a lot older, and this guy can develop nicely. Not to mention we still have Tommy Eichenberg down there. So, looking at our entire roster, let's just go through position by position after year one. Bo Nix is going to be our quarterback of the future. You know, he's already won an award of some kind. I don't know what. He's, it says he's an award winner. What did I miss? Offensive Rookie of the Year. Oh, he must have gotten the AFC one. And the NFC one went to whoever else. So that's how he got the start of. Nice. Very nice. Okay. Running back, Jonathan Brooks is our guy. We're not really worried about the rest of it. Fullback, we have somebody. Cortland Sutton, Marvin Mims, Jalen McMillan, Justin Ross, Germ Jermaine Burton, Allen Robinson, Luke McCaffrey, David Sills, the fifth. Tight ends, we're, we're okay. You know, we could probably use another good weapon, but I'm not really stressed about it. Our deal, or I mean, excuse me, our O-line is actually really solid. We got a lot of good, solid players here. Um, we brought in Parham and Jurgens from the practice squad. That's going to help us a lot. Dramont Jones comes in as a really good player. Ominahu and Zach Allen both as well. Then uh, we have Jerzon Newton and Malcolm Roach now in the center. Not to mention Makai Wingo still here. Drew Sanders is our left outside linebacker, our edge rusher. Barton Singleton, Banks will be over Singleton. Uh, but a very solid group. Asamoah is still a good depth piece. And then we have Dorian Williams and Baron Browning. He's really a middle linebacker, so we might move him around. But I might just leave him there because why not? Uh, Tompkins is our second-best corner, and Sanders still will be our slot. Andrew Booth, we have a lot of decent guys down the board just for depth. But that's nothing problem. We did trade for Sione Vaki, and I, once again, accidentally forgot to show you this. Uh, this was the trade made, Sione Vaki, for the three last picks we had. Uh, he is a guy in the draft this year, actually, in real life. But uh, he's going to be our new safety. He's just a little bit better, and he has a star dev trait. Uh, yeah, sorry for not showing anything. I keep forgetting a few things. Either way, that's the new team. Right before we start the season, this is what our team will look like. Bo Nix starts at quarterback. Uh, Jonathan Brooks at running back. Sutton, Mims, and then McMillan are our top three. The O-line looks a lot better. Now we have Duggan here. Limmer's going to play a couple different spots. We also have Parham playing tackle because it's just more of a need. Jargons and Parham are really good depth for us as well. Tight end could be upgraded, but I mean, we're not worried about it really necessarily. Uh, defensively, cornerback room looks really solid. We definitely have a good spot there. Um, got rid of uh, Singleton and a couple other backups, just, you know, cutting-wise. Just didn't need them, and they gave us some money back. Uh, Benito is going to play our outside edge both ways. Um, and then who else do we have here? Bo Limmer's our long snapper. Luke McCaffrey, returner. 
Then Drew Sanders. He also has a potential for a breakout game. We'll get to that in just a moment. But either way, that's the team. That's what we're looking like. Lots of good things here. Um, we're going to go ahead and go right here to next week so I can show you all this breakout game that's about to happen. Um, it is Drew Sanders. He is our training camp standout. That is a big deal because if he can get up to, I believe, Superstar, this could be very good for us to kind of move forward with a key set of defensive players. Um, Drew Sanders at that edge position would be great. Two combined tackles or tackle for loss or sacks, excuse me. Uh, really, all you got to do is get one because I do that either way. So either way, I'll let you know if that happens. Just one week into the season, we find out that our rookie corner is a superstar dev. That is massive news. Going to be very helpful in terms of development. Now we have an X-Factor and superstar corner. Sounds like a lot of money. Either way, we'll worry about that when we get there. We have a lot of good things happening. Christian Haynes doesn't look like that very much, but is what it is. Jerzon Newton, Johnny Newton, whatever it is. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of good upgrades. We did not get the upgrade for Drew Sanders. He did not make it. We lost our first game. But either way, here we are. No big deal. We'll just keep moving. Terrible news. We are 0-4, and we have a massive injury. A very massive injury. I mean, it is our wide receiver three, but 28 weeks, torn pectoral. He is going straight to IR, and we're going to find someone to help our offense because it clearly is not working. I don't know what's going wrong, but we're about to check out some stats. I did mean to do that last year and forgot completely. Oh, well. Bo Nix is doing garbage. 17th in passing yards, 29th in touchdowns. We're 27th in the NFL. We're really good defensively, though. Just offense is not working. I think we need a playmaker, a dynamic playmaker, and someone who's going to just absolutely ball out. We need a receiver, a wide receiver one, a major wide receiver one. Who will that be? I don't know. We have $50 million in cap room. Who do we want? That's the question. I mean, Cortland Sutton and Marvin Mims probably aren't going to get it done. Did not mean to do that. Bears have DJ Moore and Marvin Harrison Jr. No way we can get Marvin. We might be able to get more, but we can't get Marvin. No way. Is DJ Moore worth it? I don't know. He's 28. It's solid, but not amazing. I mean, I'd love Marvin, but I just don't know if that's even in the realm of possibility. What do they need? They need a D-tackle and a, and, a, and a left outside linebacker. Y'all want Malcolm Roach? I figure that'll be pretty enticing. We could get rid of Nick Benito just as a just as a throw-in and then give you a bunch of picks. Maybe they'd like Bo Limmer. Maybe he's good enough for them to be at least considerate of him. About a running back, they want one of those. Jalil had. Is there any interest on these guys? There's not. We're still going to leave Nick Benito in because of that that, uh, what's it called? Dev Trady Yaz. I'm going to see what two firsts in Benito does. Not even a little bit. Not even close. Okay, so. We got to find a receiver. I don't feel like it's right to take him because it's just, you know, we got to think of something that might actually happen. Mike Evans, I'm not in the, really the position to get him. Don't think that's good enough. Keenan Allen. We could go get Keenan Allen. He did get traded in real life. As I've said, I did not edit other teams' rosters. I didn't feel like it was worthwhile for me. Tyreek, Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle would be nice. A younger guy. He's 26. Devontae Smith would be better, though. If they're interested in that, I'll do it. They're not far. This is tough, man. We got to find a receiver. I'll let you know when I get something. Nick Benito will be sent to the 49ers for Brandon Ayuk and a backup tackle. We just got somebody. We got a good receiver. We got one that's going to run routes well. Uh, going to be a good counterpart to having, uh, what's his name, Cortland Sutton. This is going to be good for us. Very good for us. And we needed to make something happen now. Uh, Brandon Ayuk might be traded in real life anyway. So we'll move him up to where he needs to be. And we'll be on our way because, well, we need to be. Something else has to happen. Mim's going to play our slot. Ayuk and Cortland Sutton are going to be on the outside. Let's make sure that is lined up correctly. Slot wide receiver. Mims is good. All right. Looks good to us. Let's keep moving. We actually are going to stop in and do some negotiations. Uh, Pat Sertain will be back. No doubt about it. We'll go ahead and offer him this because he wants to be here. He just needs more time to think it over. He'll be here. We're not worried about it. Is it worth trading Cortland Sutton? It's not worth signing him now. He might go down in overall and dev trade other things. It's just not worth bringing him back right now. I'll bring back Brandon Jones. I'm not worried about that. He, he's, he's interested in coming back for sure. Greg Dolkic, he's not going to be expensive, so we'll definitely give him a good deal. Uh, something that favors us, maybe even. He could find a better offer for agency. I doubt it, but okay. Uh, Zach Allen, we don't need him anymore. 
We don't really need a lot of these guys. Robinson does want to be backed, but honestly, we can wait and get him for cheap, cheap. And we're going to have a ton of money even after all this. Corlin Sutton, what is that per year? It's like 12 a year. I just don't want to pay him that when Mims and McMillan could potentially be just as good later on. We might get him back in the offseason, but right now we're good. Either way, that's our resignings. We're going to try to get some wins here. Jerzon Newton has a chance at a big breakout game. This is going to be good for us because he is only a normal dev. He did lose his uh, dev trait last season, but we're not in the best spot. We've only won one game so far. We do have a tandem breakout for defense. I don't think I've ever actually seen that. What does that even mean? Oh, we're going to get the interception bonus goal or ratings boost. I'll take the ratings boost. I, I think that's fine for now. Plus, you just can't really go for extras in this. Uh, Pastor Tang gets extras, and then he's going to get more based on other things as well. That's really nice for us, just getting more development to our cornerback room. Going to be a huge addition. We'll check in really fast with these. Gregory Duggan has still not given us his dev trait yet. That's very annoying. He should be very close, if anything. Uh, I mean, he, you know, you don't get the bonus points with them early on in the season. So that does hurt you. But he should be very close. There's no doubt about that. Um, he's played probably about 300 to 400 snaps at this point. But negotiation. Let's go ahead and check this back out. We'll give him up to 9.5 and 14.5. And Pat Sertain is coming back. No doubt about that. Very good for us. Brandon Jones was close, I believe. He's getting tempted even more to come back. That's good for us. Negotiate with... I just don't know if we really want to do much more than this. If he doesn't take it, I mean, we might not go up any higher, really. Zach Allen, he just wants so much money. $8 million a year to just kind of sit on the bench after we have Aminahu and uh, DJ Jones, or Jermont, whatever, whoever back now, whoever that might be. Just not worried about it. We'll continue moving through the season. A massive win and a breakout for Jerzon Newton. Very good for us. He's now at star dev. We also get 20,000 XP for him. That's great. We got a good win. 28 to 6. We have two wins in seven games. That, you know, not the best. But, hey, we're here now. We have to play a very difficult Dallas team at 5-1. and one. Um, Colton Tompkins did not really get the way he wanted it to go. But it's fine. I mean, whatever. Who cares? We at least have made developments and progress. I think the IU condition is going to be really big for us. We just needed a dynamic receiver. Gregory Duggan is a star. Uh, that is everything here. Nothing new. Either way, let's get through this season. Checking back in, we have won a one more game at this point. We're going to just kind of get one of these guys. All right, this guy's just being stingy. We're going to try to get these guys back one way or another. Get what we need to. You keep the offers coming, and, you know, they're going a little bit up, but just nothing crazy. Really, those are the only ones I'm worried about. PJ Lott can walk. Zach Allen can walk. I don't care. But we beat the Patriots, who were 6-2. and two. So now we're up to 3-6. and six. Massive deal there. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I made our season goal to make the playoffs after last year, how we were. But, you know, it's not really going very well. Maybe we can give a good run in this last half of the season. We already win one more game, putting us to 4-6. and six, But we're still last in our division. So we've got to figure something out. Either way, we'll get it done. In Week 16, we are 5-9. and nine. We're not making the playoffs. We've got a few things we need to take care of, though. Um, you know, first off... Always get these done. That way we can benefit in the draft. Then we're just going to add some of these things up. You know, try to get some, I don't know, some positives somewhere. Get some little stat boosters. Uh, what, what, what our goal is at this point is to gear up for the draft and to gear up for next year. So we have our first round pick. I traded two futures. We just need to make sure that next year we're able to compete at the best level. Starting with uh, Brandon Jones. We're going to get him back some way. Oh, now he doesn't want to come back at all. So that's even better. Great. Greg Dulkich, uh, we'll go up to five, and if he takes it, he takes it. Wow. They both have, like, backtracked their interest. That's really good for us. Either way, we can find a better tight end. We can find a better uh, safety, probably. So we're not really worried about it if they're not going to want to be here. I'm not paying them any more than what I'm at now. At this point, the goal is breakout linebacker, breakout linebacker. Drew Sanders got another chance. He must be playing really well. He needs a couple stats. Let's hope we can get there. That would be huge for us. We're going to go ahead in here. We have a new injury somewhere. Just going to bounce through this really fast. Make sure that training gets done. Make sure all of our players are at least progressing as much as they can. I want to check that injury. And then we're going to simulate to see if we hit this breakout game. The injury is to... Oh, yeah. Tompkins did go out. I know that. Caden Stearns is now out. So our secondary is taking some massive hits. Uh, Corlin Tompkins will be out probably through the end of the season. I believe he is. Yeah. 
He will miss this weekend, next week, whatever. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go one more week ahead just to see if Drew Sanders can hit this breakout. That would be really beneficial for us. We did lose. There was a lot of points. All right, so he broke out, though. He can be a legitimate cornerstone. He's up to superstar dev. 8,000 XP for us. That is going to be massive in terms of just having a good defensive front, um, having a really dominant player up there. We're going to hit this really fast, and then we're going to go see how good he, you know, upgraded, how many extra points he gets and whatnot like that. So far, nothing really has happened. We also might check those negotiations one more time at Week 18. Uh, like I said, Cortland Sutton just isn't a guy I want to bring back for the money he's going to want. Drew Sanders will only go up one, but having him a superstar is going to be very good anyways. Let's check him out real quick. Go into abilities. He's got Reach Elite and Buy One, Get One. That's fine. Christian had a lot of upgrades here. Always do the corners on your own because you can get that slot cheese. He is now up to a 80 overall. 79 overall. Something like that. I'm not sure. Either way, I'm not worried about a depth corner, though, honestly. Let's just be real. Andrew Booth, he's a massive bust from the draft. What was it, 2021, 2022, something like that? And we'll check these negotiations really fast. Brandon Jones, I'm more, you know, a little bit worried about than Greg Dulkich, but if he'll take that, cool. Yeah, they don't have what we, they want, and I don't really want to give you any more. $21 million over three years. He wants 14 a year. It's just not happening, man. It's just not happening. Yeah, I don't think we're going to really bring back anybody. We'll let them all walk. We're going to miss the playoffs, and it is what it is at this point. So let's just keep moving. At the end of our season, Bo Nix did a very average year. Our offense was not good, 26th in the league. 13th defense. Rushing was not good either. Jonathan Brooks is just not getting it done. Points scored 25th overall. Ayuk had a decent year, but, like, I mean, he wasn't here the whole year. Completion percentage is fine. I just want more yards and more touchdowns and a few less picks. That's really all I'm looking for. Jonathan Brooks is just not getting it done. We might have to look for a better receiver. I mean, running back, excuse me. The run, the receiving room looks pretty solid, though. Not really upset with any of this. McMillan obviously went down. That does stink. Uh, Blocking-wise, lots of sacks. Lots of sacks. Every starter gave up at least four. Not great. I mean, whatever. Drew Sanders only had five and a half sacks. Had to a pick. Had 15 tackles for loss, though. Um, you know, decent. Two deflections. Did we get any, like, touchdowns? You know, oh, two touchdowns for Pat Sertain. That's awesome. Two, I'm assuming, pick sixes. He did have six interceptions. Drew Sanders had one. Cody Barton had two. And Sione Avaki had one. Not a bad year. What did I just see? 53% field goal percentage is awful. What did he do? What happened? I, I don't even know how to look at the bad stats of that. But, like, what in the world? Why did he punt so many times? Cameron Dicker's a better punter than he is a kicker, and he's a kicker. That makes no sense. Whatever, dude. Either way, we just need better play on offense. The quarterback position, the running back position, we'll see if we can even keep Bo Nix around. We're going to have to simulate a little bit and figure out what's going on. But either way, we'll go to the Super Bowl. At the end of the season... The Niners win the Super Bowl over the Raiders, crazy enough. Mahomes gets MVP, Sirianni, Coach of the Year. Mahomes, also Offensive Player of the Year. Parsons, and then Rams and Steelers win uh, their distinctive awards, whatever, for rookies. Either way, I don't know, man. We need to check our retirements. Honestly, I, I don't know who we have that's old enough. Kirk Cousins is retired. Aaron Donald retired. David Andrew, Adam Thielen, Hayden Hurst, Bakhtiari, Darius Slaylay, Johnson, Teron Armstead, Cam Hayward. Judon, Jensen, Mack, Bitonio, lots and lots of retirements. AFC West, doesn't look like no one in the AFC West retired. Okay, not a single person. That's pretty cool. Um, staff week, we don't have anything going on here. We're just going to keep moving. We have a ton of money to deal with. However, we have a lot of players to look at and bring back. And, you know, I just don't know what we're going to do. Because we need massive upgrades at some positions. One being running back, one being quarterback. We're picking fourth. We're going to have our pick of the litter of quarterbacks. And there are quite a few quarterbacks in this draft. I, I do remember seeing a few of them. Carter Cohen is a top five prospect. Uh, Dustin Townsend. Wyatt Falk. These are our guys. Wyatt Falk offhand looks like the best immediately. Then Townsend, then Cohen. We're going to have to do some more in-depth look at them. Um, solid athlete, it looks like. Oh, A awareness, F juke moves, not great. A short, B deep, A under pressure, C throw and run, not too bad. Dustin Townsend, 
Looks like a pretty good quarterback prospect as well. B injury, B awareness, A break sack, A short accuracy, A under pressure. This guy looks pretty solid, actually. Townsend might be our guy. If we go quarterback, that is. Running back, what are we looking at here? Mar Marion, is it Marlin or Marion? Marion Nelson. Good to great speed. Ball carry vision's an A. Injury's higher. You know, this looks like pretty good player as well. The juke move usually is a pretty big one, and it's okay. Antoine Rose, not as good as speed. I don't know. I'm just not really seeing anything I love here. Oh, this guy's potential athleticism is really good. Everything but strength is almost elite. The juke move ain't great, though. Break tackle is okay. Ball carry vision is not great. I don't know. The running back position is always very hard to draft. Alfonso Hancock. Uh, he looks like a pretty solid size guy. I don't know. We'll look into this more. But right now, we have to make sure we have some of our players returning or not. We have to re-sign a few people, maybe, if they want to come back. Yeah, we're not bringing back Cortland Sutton at 30 years old for $14 million a year until he's 33. He, that's just not happening. No, sir. Um, love to get another receiver, but not him right now. Brandon Jones, if he's not going to accept this, then we're not doing business. He's going to test out free agency. That's fine with me, buddy. Greg Dulkich, we're going to... The only thing that stinks about this is we have to get another tight end if we don't get this guy. Can I go three years on him? He wants to test free agency. We might be able to get him in free agency, but I just don't know that I'm caring about anybody else here. Allen Robinson, we can sign for next to nothing. He still has that mentor role, which is always nice to have. I'm literally going to offer him like nothing, though, and hope he comes, but if he doesn't, cool. No, he doesn't. Um, yeah. We'll just go to free agency. Hmm. We need a good quarterback, hmm? Brock Purdy, hmm? Hmm. Yeah, well, we might have something to do here, man. Um, and Mark Andrews? Sheesh. All right. Brock Purdy, I, you know, in real life, is he the best? No. However, we need a quarterback, and that could be a very good quarterback option. Problem is, he's going to cost a ton of money, yet we'll still have $60 million in cap. I think we're going to swing for Brock Purdy. Uh, he's, he, he very well fits what Sean Payton would like to do. We have the best offer. We're likely going to be able to land him. We could even potentially get Mark Andrews and still have a ton of money. But what else do we need? Let's go position by position. Running back, I'm just... I don't know. I think I'd rather go with Jonathan Brooks and let him develop another year than let one of those guys play. Then, any other position? I mean, I'd go with Lockett over Sutton just because of the money difference. But I just don't feel like that's worth it either. I'd rather let the young guys play. Eight a year for Dulkic, who's four years younger. He's also an X-Factor 93 overall. I don't know, man. This is tough. I'm thinking, man, this is tough. We, we're going to get Brock Purdy more than likely. I mean, the chance we don't is very slim. Ah. We don't really need a corner extra. We could use a safety, but also there might be a route in the draft for that. Brandon Jones just, I don't know. I'm not really worried about him. Might need a kicker because ours sucks, apparently. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to worry about it other than Brock Purdy. We do need a tight end, though, and he would be a massive haul of a player. And we'll still have $40 million left. I'll go three years, and I'm going to shorten that down to there, and let's see where we're at. We're not even close to getting in the ballpark. We'll give them the deal that he wants. It's a lot of money for an old player. Actually, yeah, I can't do that. By the time he's 34, he's going to be so out of value. What does our receiver room look like? Ayuk, then Mims, then Burton. But we also have McMillan. So, no, we don't need him. He'll be just as bad as one of them by the time he gets playtime, really. We don't need a tight end super bad, but like it's obviously better to have one. I'm going to try to get Dolkic back just because. He has no offer, so we actually can probably get him cheaper than what we would have earlier. If he'll go at that number, I will absolutely take that. 
I think we're going to just sit with this and hope for the best. More than likely, we'll land Brock Purdy, thankfully. That's going to be huge. We probably got him. We didn't get Dulkic yet. We didn't get Purdy? Purdy's a Ram, and we had a much better offer than they did. What an absolute, just preposterous situation. At the end of free agency, we really just bring in a lot of mentors. The only thing we extra get is we get him as a depth piece. That's solid. Uh, we get Ojabo as a depth piece, solid. And we get Dulkic back. That's really it. Brock Purdy shaded us pretty hard. So not upset about, or I mean, not happy about that. Yeah, that's pretty upsetting, not going to lie. At the NFL draft, we're going to make a quick work of this draft. We're going to go pick by pick here to see who goes. Paul Carson, first pick off the board to the Cardinals. Uh, Anthony Jordan, looking just like the mock draft did as usual. Nothing surprising there. We're going to get our pick of either quarterback or Mark Peek, our guy that we wanted. So, starting off, top five Carter Cohen, not worth it. Round one to two. Same with Falk. If neither of them are worth it and Townsend looked like he was just a little decent, I don't think I'm going to go there. I did do some scouting on Mark Peek, get some uh, extra scouting done on him. He is only 21 years old, has really good speed, a lot of good things I like with this guy. I think we're going to go with Mark Peek. He looks like a really good player. Hit in 94 speed is absurd. Uh, that's a good sign. He might be our starting safety of the future. We need that anyways. A safety at four is a bit rich, but you just, you need it. We need to look at the running back position as we go farther down. There was not anybody earlier that I was even close to interested in. Uh, looking at this, I just don't know, man. We've already looked at all these guys. Three A's from this guy from Akron. Break tackles and F. Solid speed. Poor strength. Yikes. Really bad. I see a lot of F's here. A to C on a lot of things. Jamal Weatherspoon. Decent speed. Good jumping. He's a decent athlete. Break tackles and A. Stiff arms of B. Trucking's of B. This guy looks okay. Juke move being an F is kind of concerning though. I just don't know. And plus these guys we can wait on. We're not. Running back's just not the place to go. Just not the place to go. So where do we go? That's the question. I don't have any clue. Another safety? That guy looks decent-ish. Not going another safety. A receiver? Do we really need another receiver, though? I remember Mallard. He was okay. Tight end? We see a couple tight ends here that look decent. Let's start with this one. Donald Childress. Great speed, elite strength. That's really good. A break tackle, A short route, B medium route, C pass block, B run. It looks pretty solid. A to C awareness, not bad. Philip Balmer, elite strength, good speed. A to C awareness, A run block, A catching, B and what was the catching for Childress? A to C, so potentially the same. Ah. Those are both pretty good options. We might, I mean, are we overdrafting? Maybe, but the position could be decent nonetheless. I just don't even know where to go at this point, man. We're going to try to keep this draft quick. I might just go with the tight end to say we need it, and that's really it. I also just don't think there's anything else that is really worth it. Unless there's a really good corner. An A-man coverage corner here. That's always good to see. Marginal speed, elite jumping, solid strength. He's a good athlete with explosiveness. Play Rex is an F. D, zone coverage, B tackle. It's just, you know, you like the A-man coverage, but everything else is pretty rough. Looking at our draft recap, Mark Peak is very good. That's really good for us. Um, then Childress is decent, and so is Weatherspoon. The guys we picked are good. Now, everything else, not quite so much. Danny Cooks is pretty decent. I mean, 69 in the sixth round is not too bad. We got another extra running back as well. Um, 88 speed from Weatherspoon, not too bad. Could be better. Carrying those good. Juke move actually isn't as bad as I thought. Mark Peak, though. This guy could be really solid for us. He's only 21. Each of our guys are 21 except for the running back. Childress is even not that bad. 83 speed, not too bad. I think we're pretty happy with this overall. We're going to go ahead and check out our roster, but first, let's just get to the season. In training camp, Marvin Mims gets a skill point upgrade and dev trait to superstar. That is a massive addition for him. Uh, we also had a couple extra dev trait growths, so let me show you what we're looking like right now because it wasn't from training camp, but something I just accidentally wondered upon during the uh, just editing the roster positions and stuff like that. So, uh, Weatherspoon is actually going to be a better back to start with. We now have two superstar receivers. That's really good for us. Um, and then, moving past that, defensively, Sione Vaki is now up to a 
uh, superstar himself. Tompkins is superstar. Sanders still is superstar. I don't even know that one at all. And we're in a really good spot right now. Cooks is also a dev. He's got a he's got a dev trait. That's gonna be really nice for us to have. Uh, that young player we just got in the draft. He's gonna move all the way up to D tackle two, just because I'd rather him play. Uh, but yeah, X factor for Drew Sanders as well. I don't know how that happened. That is insane. What happened here? I almost just completely missed that. Just Super Bowl week got him. He just got him. Super Bowl week. Cool. Very cool. We're going to change this because, honestly, selfless is just so stupid. Uh, we're going to go relentless, I think. Yeah, probably something like that. Or maybe the fear monger. I don't know. Probably relentless. I just like that better. Either way, yeah, massive upgrades for those guys. That might help us win some games this next season. All right, here we are. Day one. We're going to check the roster out. Something kind of insane that I've noticed that, you know, this is just really ridiculous. We'll, I'll get to you in a minute. We'll start with the offense. It's on the defensive side. Either way, we're going to start with Witherspoon. Uh, Weatherspoon as our running back because he's only two overalls worth, but he's a year younger. Receiver-wise, it's going to be Ayuk and Mims and then McMillan. Um, after that, uh, we will have Burton come up ahead of Thomas just because he's younger. Uh, the O-line, it looks basically the same that it has the entire time, minus Dawkins and Bowles, whatever. Uh, the tight end position, I don't know what's going on here. we got to adjust that for sure. we got to even get our tight end. What is going on here? Hold on. Reorder the depth chart, please. All right, there we go. We're going to move Childress ahead of the tight end 1-2 because of the same reason. We want him, okay, because of that, we can't. Um, Theo Johnson will be our fullback. Childress will be our starting tight end because he's younger and only one overall worse. Jonathan Brooks will be moved from our starting running back position just because of that defensively. Uh, so here's what we're looking at. We have a X-Factor corner, a superstar corner, a, sec a third super, or excuse me, a second superstar, third developed corner, then a superstar safety, and a potential other very good safety, depending on if he's a star, superstar, or X Factor, whatever he might be. Very good position to be in, not to mention Drew Sanders. Uh, we're in a good spot, period. Either way you look at it, we're in a very good spot. Very exciting. Maybe this year we can win some games. Drew Sanders is playing up to an 85. Much better defense than we've had previously. Maybe this can be a year we do something. Either way, let's get on to it. Just after week two, we already see Mark Peak is a superstar. This is ridiculous. Our, our secondary is insane. Both safeties are superstars. Our best corner is an X-Factor, and our second and third corners are both superstars. Absolutely just ridiculous secondary. Basically the no-fly zone all over again. I, this, is, uh, this is awesome. Uh, if we don't win something, I mean, we're already 0-2, but we got to start winning something. Please. We, I've already set our uh, yearly goal to be make the playoffs, so let's please start winning some games. If not, we might be making a quarterback move in the middle of a season. I don't know. We'll see how look, that looks like. It'll be hard to do that with the fact that we traded two first for Ayuk, but either way, I mean, we got to figure something out here. This is, this is a lot happening for us to not be good enough. Like, I don't know what it is. First year, Bo Nix played very well, and now he's just not getting it done. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's just because he's not good enough overall. I, I, but at the same time, how was he that good year one? I forgot to look at the stats, but still. Either way, we'll keep moving on through this season, hoping for good things. Week seven, we're three and three. I think we're going to give ourselves one more get week to see if we're going to stick with this quarterback plan or not. So at this point, we find out Childress is a star. That's pretty decent. I mean, he's at least going to be our starting tight end now over Greg Dulkich. Sucks that we brought him back for the number we did. But either way, we have our top two tight ends for probably the next three to four years. Um, however long we extended, Dulkic at least. Upgrading players-wise, I mean, we're just going to obviously take care of business here. Nothing to worry about. We're in a good spot, nonetheless. I mean, Drew Sanders, he's going to be balanced out a little bit with power rushing. Get a couple extra moves, get a couple bit, a bit, a little bit more speed. Power move 78, finesse moves 89. He's a really decent rusher, to be honest with you. Not too bad. But yeah, let's simulate one week. Well, first, let's check out negotiations because we're going to have to get that done. Drew Sanders, we do need to get him re-signed ASAP. We're going to give him a six-year deal. He wants to be here, and that's not even that much money, to be honest with you. Mims, he needs to come back, too. That's not even a bad deal for us. Let's get him back ASAP. He's coming back, no doubt about it. Uh, Cody Barton, we'll wait on him. Not worried about Booth. Omenehu, at this point, I can wait. The only problem is we're going to lose him and Dramont Jones, but we'll see what we look like later on those positions. Not going to bring back any of our vets like that. We're bringing back these two. I mean, we kind of have... Well, Bo Nix, maybe not, depending on what we do right now. This week is going to be big in terms of whether or not he comes back. Cody Barton, if that number is actually really nice, but I don't want to put him on a four-year deal. I'd do like three for this, but I doubt he accepts that. 
Not really. Yeah. Okay, Andrew Booth. I mean, is he worth it? At that number, it's really not bad. If he'll do that and then go up to like four years where I can just keep depth, he'll stay. That's awesome. Great. No problem there. Um, other than that, Jermont Jones only wants a one year. We'll look at him later again, but either way, let's simulate one week and let's see where we land. Uh, this could be a make or break thing right here for Bo Nix and his career. We're going to do this. See if we win. That's going to be big. We need to get a win here. And if we don't, we'll check the stats and see if he's the problem or if it's something else. But week eight being the bye week, we do get a win, a massive win. We move to four and three. We're still the last in our division. We have multiple breakouts happening. Who's our weekly award winner? Bo Nix. Well, he was also the weekly award winner two weeks ago. And before that, we haven't had anybody. But Bo Nix has been two of the top players of the week so far. Makes me wonder what our stats look like. Bo Nix is 7th in yards, 4th in touchdowns. We're 8th on offensive yards. We're doing a lot better. 5th in defense. Rushing is still lacking. Jamal Weatherspoon's just not doing that great. Um, receiving is doing good for IU. He's in a good spot. Points allowed, we're 1st in defense. I mean, we shouldn't be allowing many yards with how many good corners we have. The secondary is elite. They should let Drew Sanders get tons and tons of progress. I think at this point... We're going to try to see if we can let this just continue to play out. Somebody won these DBs. Brandon Ayuk to X-Factor. It'd be great to have. I doubt it happens. It's just hard. It's very, very hard to get that breakout unless you manually try very hard. Uh, Baron Browning. That would be massive. Having him get up to superstar. Having superstar <laughs> again on defense. Absolutely insane. This is absurd. Baron Browning has now hit superstar as well. We have so many superstars on our defense. The offensive player, who was it? A brand and I did not hit it. That's what it was. Did not hit his, but we get a win. We're going into next week, and we're looking really good. We're looking in a good spot. I mean, everything's looking up for us. We're at least winning games at this point. 17 to 14 of the Jets. We're 5 and 3. We're, comp we're, we're competent. That's all we can ask for. So we're going to keep this moving. Jamal Weatherspoon's still pretty low. I'm a little interested in why he isn't developing, or we're not seeing what his dev trade is yet. But. We're, we're doing good on defense. We just got to get the offense to continue moving. Let's try to see what we're at in terms of that on the, the development of Weatherspoon. Bo Nix is going to have an upgrade. That's going to be nice. Oh, he's right there. It'll be one more game and we'll know what Weatherspoon has. Good enough for us. Everything else looks really good. McMillan's up. Burton's up. Look at this defense, man. Look at this secondary. Absolutely insane. Two Safeties with Superstar. Two corners with Superstar. A corner with X-Factor. An edge rusher with, uh, with X-Factor. And an edge rusher with Superstar. What an absolute ridiculous look. This couldn't be any better for us right now, to be honest with you. I don't even... Yeah, this is great. This is absolutely great. Let's keep moving. Jamal Weatherspoon is a Superstar. This has been a loaded class for us. Two Superstars. I don't even know what the other player was. I can't remember. Uh, but we have a safety, we have a running back. The tight end, he's a star. That's what it was. Other than that, we're fine. I mean, things just have to start clicking. We lost against one of the worst teams in the league this past week. Not good for us there. We just got to think about how to win games and whatever do that is, do it. I mean, that's where we are. Win games, period. End of story. Whatever that means, do it. So at the end of the regular season, we beat the Chiefs 31-28 to complete the sweep of the Chiefs. We beat them both times, winning our division. We actually get a win, which means we're going to have some kind of... We're the two seed in our conference, which means we have home field advantage, except for if we play the one seed. That is massive for us. We need to check out some stats here. Uh, Bo Nix, pretty much the same as he was last year. Offense overall, we're 10th in the NFL. Defense, second. Rushing, it's better than last year, but still not amazing. Uh, points scored, decent. Receiving was really good for IUK. Points allowed first, it should be, with how good our defense looks on paper. Bo Nix cleaned up the turnovers, and that makes a world of difference. A few hundred more yards, and basically the same touchdowns and completion percentage, but didn't turn the ball over. That makes a difference. Jonathan Brooks and Weatherspoon, really, all three of these guys, our quarterback and two running backs, had a solid year. Uh, nothing uh, nothing crazy, but definitely good. McMillan, a really solid year himself. Ayuk with 15 touchdowns out of our 28. Blocking-wise, let's see if there's anybody did really good. Miners had a decent season, but other than that, nothing crazy. Sack numbers, 
10 from Sanders, 8.5 from Newton, 6 from Browning. Did we get any insane numbers from the interceptions? 3 from Sertain, 1 from Baki, 1 from Tompkins, 1 from Peak, and 1 from Sanders still. Do we have any touchdowns? No touchdowns, no safeties, but that's okay. Either way, much better team. Now we're in the playoffs for the first time with this Broncos team led by Bo Nix. Um, rivalry rematch. We're going to play the Raiders for the third time this season. I think we split the series against them in the, in the regular season. One win is sweet, but two feels even better. So we must have split. Either way, we're trying to win as many games as possible. If we can get to a Super Bowl, awesome. If we can just win a couple games and set up ourselves for next season, awesome. At this point, we're in a better spot than we have been all this rebuild at this point. I mean, this has been, I mean, it's been two days worth of me rebuilding this team and we're in a much better spot now than we were then. So we also have a lot of staff points to spend. I probably should go do that and bonus up some defensive stuff or whatnot. For example, like right here, we're going to go, what do we do here? Acceleration, give me that. I'm going to do that a couple times. That's a big upgrade. And then 14 points. We'll just fix that. A little bit less injury concern. That helps always. No problem there. And now we have, you know, a lot of benefits here um, from that. Now we get to upgrade some players and we're going to get even better. Mark Peak is going to go up again. He is our rookie uh, safety. He is all the way up to an 86 overall as a rookie. Very good season from him. Uh, he also has all of his superstar abilities available. Not a bad spot to be in. Mike Sander still going to be our slot guy. He's up to an 81 overall after three years. Uh, this is his third year. He should be now. Superstar corner. Really good to have three of these guys. Let's hope we can do something in the playoffs. Starting off, we're just going to send this first week to hope we win. And if this works, we'll probably jump in. And we lose in the first round. Great. We're going to set up ourselves for the future now. So really quick, I want to show you down here at the bottom. We finished about middle of the pack offensively, a little bit higher than that on average. But defensively, top five. I mean, defensive rush yards, five. Defensive pass yards, two. Points per game, one. We're in a good spot defensively, which we just got to figure out the offense. We got to have a little bit more explosion, maybe a better quarterback. It, Bo Nix had a very good season. There's a chance maybe we trade him if there's somebody available in free agency and we go get a legit quarterback here going in the next year. Because at this point, I don't even know what else to do. I mean, we've, we've gotten everything as far as we can. Let's check our season recap. Um, Patrick Mahomes does win that. Do we have anything? No offensive rookie of the year, no defensive rookie of the year. Uh, that stinks, honestly. It really does. But no worry. We did get AFC offensive rookie of the year instead of uh, for Weatherspoon, our running back. So that's going to help some. He got up another overall or two. But yeah, checking retirements now. Let's see where we're at. Uh, Tyler Lockett, and Cooper Cup, McGovern, Winston, Tyron Smith, DeAndre Hopkins, Zach Martin, Stephon Gilmore, Travis Kelsey, Keenan Allen, Alvin Kamara, Quandre Diggs, Derek Carr, PJ Walker, the legend, retires. Rip. Uh, either way, lots of uh, retirements from big name players, but we're in a new age NFL, and this Broncos team is stepping up year after year after year. We have $105 million available. Nope, just $105. That's it. Not any more than that. We're in a good spot, though. We just got to figure out some things right now. Can a quarterback come to free agency, please? You know, a Josh Allen, a Joe Burrow, something like that. That'd be pretty nifty, if you ask me. Uh, either way, let's see what we can do. We got a few guys to negotiate with. Jerzon Newton, we're accepting that option, no doubt about it. Bo Nix, we're going to go ahead and accept the option. We might even trade him later on, but right now we're accepting that. Cody Barton, he doesn't want that much money. If he'll accept right at four, I'll take him for two years for now. We can potentially trade him later. Solid player, nothing to get upset about. Amenahu, 76. What's Dramont Jones? He's still a 78. I'd rather have Dramont Jones at that point. If he takes that number, that's it. He doesn't take it. A minute who might be an option then, but we're going to wait. Other than that, I don't know. Malcolm Roach is decent. We're going to keep him around if we can. He should accept this. There's no reason he shouldn't. He's fine. He's back. A minute who, let's see what you want. You want only three a year, four a year, eight a year, six, whatever that is. Numbers. Yeah, those. He, like, he wants to be here. If he takes that, we'll keep him. Not interested. We might get him in free agency. We'll see. Um, Other than that, I just don't... I'll get Parham back for depth. That's a really good depth number. He wants to play elsewhere, though. Jurgens, do you want to come back for three? Free agency better. I'm not worried about it, honestly. We're, I'm really just not. We just don't need these guys anyways. Um, 
yeah, looks like we're good. Clowney, if, if he'll come back, he's 74 or overall. It's not that bad. Still got that mentor. Yeah, he'll stay. That's fine with me. Another guy we don't have to find in depth pieces. So there's all of our re-signings. Not much happening there. We're just going to move on. Not worried about him at all. We shouldn't have a first-round pick this year. We should have a lot of money, though. And we're going to hope that there's a very major free agent here. I would say that's pretty major. I would, in fact, say that's pretty major. All right, man. I guess we're loading up. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'd rather us try to figure out the quarterback position. We're going to try to figure out this quarterback position. We're going to see if we can flop some picks and maybe our starting quarterback himself for a legit number one QB. I like Bo Nix. He's done good for us so far. Nothing too bad. But we're just not getting anywhere. We're just not getting anywhere. Ha, funny you want to. Carter Cohen is X-Factor. And he's a backup. We have our deal. Bo Nix, Jonathan Brooks, and a backup receiver to the Bears with our first in two years, our fourth in two years, and our second next year for the X-Factor quarterback and Kendrick Green. At this point, just changes had to be made. This guy's a backup anyways, and he's an X-Factor quarterback behind Justin Fields. The guy's a bum. So why not go ahead and make something happen? Now we don't have to pay Bo Nix. We don't have to pay a quarterback nearly as soon. That actually can help us in the long run. We do. How do we lose that much money? I'm not really sure. I think Tyreek Hill is worth the, the investment now. Three years. Let's see where we're at if we put in this offer. Just because of the fact that we're not even close. Not even a little bit close. We'll go with a very player-friendly offer. We'll see how much this hurts us. We're still not even close. So, we're going to go very player-friendly. Three years, though. That gives us only $10 million left. This is absurd. If the year makes it any better. No, we're not getting Tyreek Hill, period. We got our quarterback. Running back, just nothing valuable enough. Receiver. I don't think anything else here is going to be worth it. Tight end, Musgrave's cool and all, but like just nothing worth it. Once again, I don't really think that anything worth it is here. Deion Dawkins is fine. I mean, Zach Tom with the age is better, but just, you know, it's whatever there. I don't know. What, what are we looking at with Zach Tom? He's 82. Dawkins is 82. I'd do that and then trade out Dawkins. He wants to be here anyways. It's kind of an upgrade in the long run. We'll do that. Oh, we're by far the only offer, and we're the best offer. So let's reduce this quite a large amount so we can save some money here. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, yeah, we're still in a very good spot. Nobody else here that I really care about. We'll trade Deion Dawkins. We can get something decent out of him. And other than that, I don't know that we have much else to do. That's going to make a very large difference at least. We have to bring back some kind of defensive end because we don't have any right now essentially I wouldn't mind bringing in like a DeForest Buckner and bumping him outside but 20 million a year is steep man we're probably gonna have to stick with the actual ends Will McDonald he's a bit small he's more of an edge Dremont Jones could come back we did have a discussion with him briefly We'll give him an offer. Same with probably Nolan. He's small though. I don't want a small guy like that. We don't. That doesn't fit our scheme right. Keon White would be very nice, actually. He's very young, or not as young as I thought, but decent. Not too expensive. We can probably reduce that offer if no one else is buying for him. Yeah, we're by far the best offer. We'll reduce this substantially. Give ourselves a third year. Easy does it with him. Um, no problem there. We can even go get like a Lucas Van Ness for really cheap and bump him down to an end. I think that's the move. With the age he's at and the overall, give him four years. Doesn't really want to be here, but I don't really care. I mean, he's he's going to play well for us. He doesn't, well, we're going to have to offer him something, which isn't that bad because this offer is really not even bad to begin with. We'll give him two and a half and two. Maybe that's enough to get him. We do have the best offer so far. Devin Bush, hilarious. We could use maybe one more linebacker. We'll give him an offer, just Trenton Simpson, to get somebody going here. Probably not going to land him. 
Maybe just go with Shaq Thompson when all said and done. Make sure there's nobody else I really want. I don't think so. I mean, we've got really good secondary people. Let's check where we're at with our targeted guy, Zach Tom. We're in front running for everybody, pretty much. We have to bump up Lucas Van Ness's offer a little bit. We'll go two and a half and two and a half in the third year as well. We'll go ahead and move on with this one and hope for the best here. We got Lucas Van Ness and Zach Tom. Everybody else is still available. Trent and Simpson, we're not going to land without paying him anymore. We're going to reduce that, off, withdraw that offer too, because I just feel like we can get better options at maybe a linebacker position. Um, we got to find somebody with the right size, though, is going to be the problem here. Bradley Chubb could play up a little bit. Byron Young's a bit undersized, but could do it. Might have to go with the in position, though. And that's okay. I'm not trying to pay somebody an a absurd amount of money to just not be what, they, what I need them to be. So we're probably going to just find somebody that fits, and that's it. I mean, Keon White could still be it. Yeah, we're just going to leave him alone, and hopefully he signs. And then who did I make? Oh, the middle linebacker. We need somebody here. Trenton Simpson would be nice with his age, but he doesn't really want to be here. I'm really fine with Shaq Thompson. That might be just where we go. A year of Shaq Thompson. Good to me. And that should be good for us. Make sure we're looking at who's available. Mentor, Deshaun Watson. Very interesting. Might not want to be mentored by him. Just saying. Um, Derrick Henry is a mentor. would be cool. That might help our running back position out. I'm going to give him an offer simply because of that. Like, If we can help our running back position out, that would be great. We just haven't had the best success in that, that vein so far. So we're going to try that. We are the best offer everybody has. Hopefully we land them all. We get Henry and Thompson. Now we just got to get Keon White. Not yet for him. He's interested. We have been paid. Whatever. I don't know what's wrong with him. We're probably going to get him this if once we simulate. I'll let you know if anything changes. Starting the NFL draft, we really don't have anything to look forward to here. Very interesting, at least. We go all the way to the second round before anything is going to matter to us. Starting off, we're just going to go best player available that we can find. I mean, something of need, maybe, if that's possible. But I just don't know if we're going to find much. I mean, we don't really need a safety or anything in the secondary. We could use some D-linemen. If we can find anything there, that would be nice. Um, let's go back up to left end. Let's let's not just run past it here. Um, Tyree Hanna looks potentially decent, but that's just so late. Day three already? I just don't know about that. Not really happy with the things available. Dontrell Weber may be okay. Solid on everything, basically. Block shedding's bad. Power moves terrible. Finesse moves are really good, but just, I don't know. Not really liking anything there. I don't know, man. We may just not find anything. We may just be in a really odd spot where we just have to take whatever we see. Ross Nickerson looks really good, but he'd be an inside linebacker for sure. Definitely. Good speed. B-zone, A-tackle. We might go with him just for the depth piece, but like, I'd love to have something that actually fits what we need. I mean, it just... Nothing. I mean, is there any O-lineman maybe? No, come on. Jay, Justin Mayweather looks okay. We have him 90% scouted. He's a good athlete. Terrible run block power. Not good run blocking, period, really. Eric Langham looks okay. Just not the greatest run blocker, once again. McLean has a couple Bs, a good A. Bad run block power once again, but at least the decent run block. We might go with McLean. Though, what are we? He's a day three. I'm just not going to waste a time. Not worth it at this point, man. A receiver from UTEP. Interesting. Not really that interesting, but, you know, interesting nonetheless. Kerry Gibson. Just not really very good options here. 
I'm not even upset if we just go ahead and trade everything for picks next year, to be honest with you. Because I just don't know what to pick. Is there like a anything we would be interested in? I just don't even know. Anything down the board even at this point. I'd love to get another edge rusher. I just don't know if we're going to find one. Like a speed rusher would be great, but that's around three to four. And we're around two. He looks okay. Power moves are decent. So finesse moves are solid. Carl Hemsley. We're going to look at him and Matt Boast and Ty Parker real quick. Not good speed. Power moves are good. Finesse moves are... Where are they at? They're decent. Awareness is low, though. Ty Parker. Awareness is better. Finesse moves are good. Power moves are not great. Hit power is not great. I'm going to go with probably Matt Boast here. Stephen Hawkins. Hawkins. Stephen Hawking. Yeah, him. Bad pass blocker, but we might take this one anyways. I kind of like some of the things he has. Plus, we need better run blocking, period. So we'll go ahead with it. Not even interested, man. We're going to let the Sim do the rest of this draft. What a great draft class this was. A 63 overall, 66 overall, 60, a 68 was our best, and I didn't even pick him. A late round receiver who's probably going to get cut. What an amazing draft, to be quite honest with you. Um, either way, we're going to get right into this season just because there's nothing else to look for here. So here we look at the lineup. We have, you know, uh, oh, we have something we have to fix, actually. Um, so Ayuk, Cohen, there are guys. Ayuk's up to X Factor. That's big for us. Mims did go down to star, but that's fine. Witherspoon's still star. Dulkic is going to, we're going to move Henry to fullback because that would be just absolutely monstrous. Um, looking at across though, this is pretty solid. Childress is our best tight end. Tom and Dawkins are going to remain our tackles. I'm probably going to trade McGlinchey instead. I think he's going to make more money anyways. Um, plus, he's just three overalls worse, so why not? The rest of the line is pretty good. Defensively, uh, so obviously we have, everything stayed the same secondary-wise, which is really nice for us. We have our X-Factor. We have our two star corners. We have our two superstar safeties. But we also have a superstar D-tackle now. That's big. Lucas Van Ness comes in. He's going to be a big addition as well, being a star. Not to mention still having Drew Sanders being superstar. We did trade Cody Barton for uh, J.D. Bertrand just to have – I think it's J.D. Bertrand. Is that right? Yes. Just to make sure um, that, you know, we got some value out of him. We didn't need Barton and his contract. So we got a player who's a couple overalls worse, but he's younger and just more valuable to us right now. Jermaine Burton, we're not looking to trade him. We need the depth at receiver. But other than that, we do have a trade to make with one of our tackles. McGlinchey could be... What's the other one? I don't even know right now. Dawkins making 17. McGlinchey making 21, and he's only got a year left. So we're going to see what we can get from McGlinchey right now. I mean, Teron Johnson's pretty solid for a 2.4 cap hit. I'll take it. Not even going to doubt it. Not even one bit. Get some depth at corner. Uh, really good nickel corner right there. And a couple extra picks. Who cares? Either way, I'm going to make sure they get into the depth chart correctly. And then we're going to start simulating this season. At week six and we're two and three. Not very happy about this result so far. We have a lot of money still. We got to get some guys re-signed. We're going to go ahead and get Vaki down for a long time. Because, well, he's a good player and we don't want him to leave. Sainer still, same situation. Very good player. Look at that. Look at that number. Look at that number. He ain't leaving. No chance. Christian Haynes probably doesn't need to leave either. That's a bit much of a, a lot more of a steeper number, but we're, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Quinn Miners, I can't believe he's already off of contract again. I really don't want to go over three. I'd rather bump it down a little bit. I'm glad we were able to do that with him, get it down. McMillan, he's not going to cost anything. I mean, four, five years, six years for that. If he takes it, cool. Cool. Great. Good receiver. We got him forever. Not worried about it. J.D. Bertrand. Uh, you know, once again, another guy, six years. If we can get him for this number, that would be elite. Great. Four million a year for six years. Like, we're, we're, play, we're paying these guys forever to do, you know, be role players and backups. That's all you can ask for. He's starting to like the offer. Jermaine Burton, same situation. A little bit less inclined to pay him. We'll give him that. Yeah, we might look to trade him if he's going to stay there. That's a bit of a high number for a third tight end. Come on, bud. Bo Limmer. Eh, he's, he's young. If he'll take this, I'll do it. Great. He's staying. We're, we're getting a lot of these guys back. We're not losing many. 
Eichenberg, he can walk. We've already re-signed two linebackers. Kendrick Green, he's too old to worry about. Uh, Deion Dawkins, we're going to let him probably walk. Shaq Thompson will walk. Derrick Henry will walk. Clowney will walk. We'll accept that option. So right now, we probably need to look at trading Burton and maybe Theo Johnson as well. We're going to look and see what that can do to get us any better. I don't know. What's, what's wrong with our team? Looking down, I mean, our defense is still really good. Top 10 and everything. Our offense is just not clicking. So far, stats, Cohen, he's just not scoring the ball. Offensive yards, we're not moving down the field. Maybe we need a different playbook. I don't know. We might look to change our playbook and see if that'll help us. I don't know what offense would be good for us, but we might just go with like a Niners offense or something. We're probably going to sim till week eight and see what happens. And if we don't have anything done, then we might have to, you know, make a trade. It's safe to say I didn't think this was going to work, but Jermaine Burton and Christian Haynes, a second and a first for Marvin Harrison Jr. might do the trick. We kind of have a three-headed monster now. Carter Cohen, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Brandon Ayuk. I, I know he's a higher overall than Marvin is, but I, I want him to play a lot right now. Uh, Bo Limmer's going to take in at guard. We were going to lose him anyways, uh, Christian Haynes, because of, uh, well, you know, contract situation. So, no harm, no foul. We get Marvin Harrison Jr. I think I'm okay with that. I think most will be okay with that. I think we're fine. I think we're good. Uh, yeah. So, we're also going to let Bertrand and Banks be the starters now just because of the fact that Shaq Thompson's older. We, I mean, they're not that far off in overall. Let's just let the, you know, the young guys play. Let them develop. Either way, let's try to win some dang games, please. I don't remember what our record is. We're like 8-7, and seven, but major injuries. Marvin Mims has been out for a while, and now Drew Sanders is out. That is tough for us. Seven weeks. That, I mean, we're at week 17. That means I don't even know if he'll make the Super Bowl if we make it. If we make it. And we're 8-7. and seven. So, yeesh. I don't know about that one, Chief. Uh, we're in a good spot, though, otherwise. We're going to have to check some of these negotiations. Uh, also, there was a UFL kicker that just made a 64-yard field goal for a game winner who hasn't kicked a field goal since high school. Not even in this game. Not even last year. Not in college. This was his first kick since high school. And he made it. That's insane, man. That's actually crazy. Uh, no. So, negotiate players. Sitting here watching the UFL as I'm simming through this. Uh... You know, Kalen Carson would be nice. How much you want to pay? How about that right there? He's getting tempted by my offer. Uh, Theo Johnson, he ain't coming back. Not a chance I'm paying him that. Trey Palmer, not worth it. Wingo, not worth it. Eichenberg, probably not worth it either. I mean, that's actually decent. If I can do that right there, I'll take him. Good deal. Come back to the team, bud. Um, Caden Stearns, no. Well? Nah, not worth it. Deion Dawkins does want to come back. I might give him a year or two. He wants to be here. If he'll take that, I'll give him it. Cool. That'll be good for us to just keep the position locked down. We don't have to worry about it for now. And we'll accept Cortland Tompkins. Other than that, am I worried about bringing any of these guys back? Teron Johnson could come back. Yeah, I wouldn't be upset about that, but right now I can't even negotiate with him, can I? Oh, I can. I'm blind. Give me that right there and I'll do it. He's on track, maybe interested. I don't think I'm really interested in anybody else, though. Wingo, not for two years, that. Not for two years. Not for three years. Kalen Carson, I'll be interested in getting back, but we can wait on him till the end of the season. Maybe I'll look at him next week, but let's just quickly simulate these two weeks and see if we can make the playoffs. That's going to be a big deal. We need a win right now. We do. We get that much. Got a very, we got a, a weekly award, too, I just noticed. So we're going to go ahead and hit these and make sure we get all of our upgrades as good as possible. And then we will jump into the next week. But first, we just got to make sure we get there. We just got to make sure we get there. I want to see what we did to get in a weekly award. Uh, it was Baron Browning with three sacks and seven tackles. Not a bad week from him. That's big because of Drew Sanders' injury. We needed somebody to step up for sure. Hopefully, our quarterback will be upgraded. Um, you know, we're, we're a year in, and this quarterback's already substantially better than Bo Nix was in terms of overall. Uh, and he's three years younger. So, we've got our quarterback for the future. That was a very good trade for us. Um, we're going to have Mark Peek about to hit a 90 sometime soon as well. That's going to be huge for us. Our secondary is just absolutely bonkers. Absolutely ridiculous. We're going to go one more week and hope we can win this game against our divisional rival. And we lose. We still make the playoffs, though, just barely. 
Let's check our stats. We need to see how good we were. Wyatt Falk, about the same place that he was. We're middle of the pack offense, though. That's better than we've ever done. Defense, we're top 10. Rushing is better this year. Uh, still pretty not great, but whatever. Point scored is better. Receiving's a lot lower. Points allowed is still third. We're still really good defensively. Uh, need to get down on the interceptions, but we're really not doing too bad. Really good completion percentage. Jamal Weatherspoon had a really solid season. I mean, what are we? How many? Wow. What are we looking at? 17, 21, 22 total rushing touchdowns. Very interesting there. Receiving Brandon Ayuk and Marvin Harrison Jr. split almost evenly. Uh, both had six, five and six touchdowns. We also get 600 yards from Chil A very dispersed receiving room. Not bad, though. Nothing wrong with that. Duggan, heck of a year from him. No sacks allowed. Not a bad year at all. And then finally, Baron Browning gets 10 sacks. Drew Sanders only had eight, but missed the last few weeks. Jerzon Newton had nine and a half. Lucas Van Ness had six. How many picks did we get? Three, five, seven, nine, ten. Exactly. And any safeties? Couple safeties. Newton and Van Ness. And how about touchdowns? No touchdowns. All right. Kicking. Can Cameron Dicker do better? He's done. He's better. He's not making 50% of his field goals anymore. We're in a good spot. Let's just see if we can do anything in these playoffs. We're going to jump into this playoff game. We are at 88. They are at 85. And we have a lot more X-Factor players than they do. We're going to go ahead and, uh, what is it called? I don't even know. Go to the next quarter. We get the ball at, I guess, a goal line stop happened. We're up 7-0 going into the second quarter. That's what we like to see. What we like to see. We get a turnover, it looks like. Score three more. They get three. Not great. But we match it with our own three going into halftime. Much better situation. Get up. Oh, we're up 20-3. to three. Oh, can we put up a bigger score? We can't. But they get up. Uh, yes, yikes. All right. We're not going to go by quarter. We're going to go by possession. Massive drive. We get up by 17. We're going to click through here. Third and 10 for them. Fourth and two. And first and 10 for us as they are not able to collect their thoughts there. And we get another touchdown. 26 yards to Brain Knife. We're going to run away with this game versus the two seed. Make a huge upset in Baltimore. Did we miss a PAT? Absolutely ridiculous. 72% completion, 350 yards, three touchdowns from Carter Cohen, QB1. In fact, he is QB1. What else do I need to say? Either way, let's keep moving. Going on through the playoffs, we have things to do. We got games to win. We got bowls to pl play in, to be at. Yeah, that. We got trophies to take home. We got things to do, okay? Uh, either way, make sure we get some of these benefits that way, something happens, something's helped, something somewhere is getting benefits, whether it's me or someone else, might as well, right? Either way, divisional round time, we go. Massive win over the two seed Ravens, seven seed, wow, just very good for us. Now we have to play the 14-3 Buffalo Bills, awesome, wonderful, great, that's exactly what I wanted to do, couldn't have wanted anything better. Let's get into the game. We got a few upgrades to probably have to do here in a second, but hopefully Carter Cohen gets one. We're going to need it, buddy. Not Carter Cohen, but Jamal Weatherspoon. It's a solid upgrade either way. Can always get a good playmaker some upgrades. And we're going to go ahead and skip the hot opponent and go straight into the play the moments. You know how it is. You know how it is. Go on ahead and get right into it. We are four overalls better. Why do they have a much better record? I don't know. Maybe they don't have to play the Chiefs twice a year. That might help them. But, doesn't help me. So, let's get into it. Looks like we're moving upfield well. Looks like we're going to have to stop, though. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We get our three. Go to the end of the quarter, please. They quickly get downfield. Very quickly. There's like four plays. Next quarter, though. Up seven to three, they are. Now 14 to three. Can we? Yeah, we got our seven matched. And going into halftime, we do not do much else. Getting the ball the first half, though. Pin them back deep. Can we get a drive here? What, what are we at? What are we looking like? We're going to probably jump in here and help out this drive. Maybe we'll play again in a moment, but we're definitely helping on this drive. We're going to run this ball. And we get next to nothing. I mean, three yards. Congratulations on an 18-yard need. Great. Good job. Great decision by me. Childress hits it over the middle. That's not the middle of the field, but either way, he gets it. 17 of 19, 173 yards, and we are moving. Very good play from our quarterback. 
Donald Childress is a very nice safety blanket, that's for sure. He might have a good route over here, depending on what this coverage looks like, and he will. He's absolutely wide open, except we threw a terrible ball. He is still an absolute dog. He made that play happen. Let's go. Almost ran him right over, straight into the end zone, but not quite. Either way, we're probably going to get in the end zone here. It's a matter of when, not if. I say that, and I'm going to throw a pick right now. Ah, too far. I thought we had him. I thought he was going to die for it and reach it. Let's see. This is a very risky play in my opinion, but I'm going here. Good throw. Good throw, idiot. At the two-yard line, I think I'm going to go for this. Call me an idiot. Whatever. I am. I know. Not worried about it. We have a good shot here, though. I like the opening here. And we get in. I don't know how, but we do. Up 15 to 14. Let's get the super sim out because I ain't worrying about the defense right now. Let's go change of possession. We're, oh, we get our two-point conversion. Nice little ad there. Uh, Carter Cohen rushes in. And they have to punt. We get the ball back. Looks like we're going to make very large strides to get upfield. We get three more points on the board. They have to score a touchdown now. They get a very large game. A very large game. Or is that a negative? I'm not really sure. They're in the red zone. They tie it, and they're going to go up by one. Great. It's two minutes. It's my time to shine. It's Carter Cohen's time to shine, actually. Good job, Gregory. 200 yards, 20 out of 25, 80% completion. This guy is a killer. Stone cold. We get a good play to start off with. Just something to, you know, establish the drive. I like Mims route here. Depending on how the... If this is a cover two, this could be very nice for us. I couldn't get it off in time. I, was, I should have thrown it earlier. I had him wide open. I didn't think the... I thought the corner was dropping. Let's see. Derrick Henry in the slot. You like that, don't you? Can we throw the ball, please? His release takes seven years. Absolutely absurd. Childress hauls it in. Doesn't give me a single doubt in my mind that he was going to catch that. I doubt it heavily. Uh, it's okay. And Childress, once again, taking it in. We're getting into field goal range quickly. Let's go. First down. They're calling their own timeouts now. They have to. Let them call their timeouts. Keep the ball moving. Get first downs. And let's go. Marvin Harrison over there on the left side. He might be very good right here. He is. He's a very good player. Very good receiver. Like to have him on my team. And he's not against me. That's a very good thing. Our running back in the slot gets us the first down, keeps our drive moving. We're going to be able to run this clock out and do what we want at this point. All up to a field goal. They have their, they don't have any timeouts. They can't ice us. Very good for us. Just can't fumble, can't give the ball up. And I give it to Golden. Great idea. Don't know why, but I did. If Mims will block and his man comes inside. Woo! He got picked up and thrown. 20 seconds left at the two-yard line. Let's see what we can do here. Marvin has no one covering him, and he's going to get a touchdown right here. What an idiot. What an idiot. 
We're going to go for two to make sure we get our lead if we can. Because if not, we're going to lose anyways if they score. However, not going to let that happen. But, you know, you never know. You just never do. We got it. Straight in. Seven-point game. They have to score and get the extra point. Massive for us. We're going to jump to next play. Their ball. We'll jump into these. Drazon Newton right up the middle. He's out of bounds. Get out of there, idiot. Terrible. Josh Allen, only 12 for 17 and 155 yards. I don't know what he's doing. Lots of cardio, it seems. David Ojabo on that edge. Baron Browning on this one. We're going to come around this side. Can we please go? All right. That's a little unsettling. Not going to lie. We need to play some zone. Drop them deep. Put pressure. Thompson picks it off in the end zone. We're going to the conference championship. That made me incredibly nervous. I'm just better. I'm just better. Absolutely better. No doubt about it. 79%. 250. Two touchdowns. Easy going for Carter Cohen, the absolute QB1. We never doubted him. Not one minute. We didn't. And if you did, you're wrong. You didn't. We played the two-seed Ravens. We played the one-seed Bills. And now we have to take on the four-seed Chiefs. Not fun. Not fun at all. We're going to do what we normally do. And they get their three. We're, we're taking that, though. We're taking that. Absolutely. Uh, but we need to po score points as well. We get our three. Matching it up. Let's please get a seven, though. Seven will be nice. Yeah, there we go. There's seven. Okay, and going into halftime, we are up. Huge for us. Let's go to the next quarter. And they start off the fourth, and looks like they get a turnover, and we're up 17-3. This is a very good start for us. They are in scoring position right now. They get seven. We can handle it, though. Dom Carr. Uh, fourth and three, we're going to punt. They get it all the way down to the 37 or something. What in the world? Oh, did we get the ball back? Because they had a penalty. Nice. Oh, massive. 52-yard touchdown. Carter Cohen to Marvin Harrison Jr. That's a huge one for us. Uh, let's just go and click through a little bit. Get some of this quarter down. Uh, on their scoring drive, they are they turned the ball over. We are marching. The running game is killing these Chiefs. And we are... I didn't even realize that was that close to the end of the game. We just cakewalked through the Chiefs. It was easy. Who's Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, I don't know. Don't recognize him. Lions versus Broncos in this Super Bowl. We've made it this far. Uh, is that... Don't tell me that's old boy that I was looking at earlier. I don't remember his... Ta Townsend? What's his name? Give me a second. Uh, let's see. Alex Woodward, actually, is his name. We're going to go to the next quarter. Uh, quick seven points for us. They struggle a little more to only get three. We're fine with that. Either way, going down. Okay, we'll give them that drive. They get seven more. But hey, we're going to match it really quick. We're going to put up that only being down by three going into halftime. Starting off the next half, we get the ball, but don't do much with it. And they, at the end of their this quarter, are about to score themselves. So let's play some defense here. Let's see if we can do something to help out. And let's hope something well happens. Good defense, guys. Did terrible. Love it. <laughs> Going into the next play. The next drive, excuse me. Nice dark skin Luke McCaffrey. I mean, he just looks a little bit darker than in real life. I don't know why. Get it out to the 25. That was a good return considering where we started from. And Mr. Cohen is going to run in. And he's going to take over this game now. Just letting you know. He's going to. I don't really like this play, but we're going to see how this works because it looks very funky. It worked. Marvin Harrison right over the middle. Carter Cohen, 14 of 18, 160 yards with two touchdowns. None, some slight, you know, nothing crazy. Would have liked the stiff arm there, but, you know, can't always win them.
And first down, one way or another. I think Mims is getting this ball, but I'm not entirely certain. Very good run. Very good. We like it. Josh Allen and Aiden Hutchinson on bookends are, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty intimidating, I will say. Uh, yeah, definitely a little bit. And just overthrown. Great. Third and 12. We're doing all right. We'll get there. I'm not really sure what that play is. Marvin Harrison, a massive catch right over the middle of the field. Very, I keep saying the middle of the field. That time it actually was. I don't know why I can't get that out of my head, but hey, at least it was actually the middle of the field that time. Tried to, you know, truck through Josh Allen. Probably not going to work too well, but either way, you know, it happens. Greg Dolkich on the outside. Brandon Knight gets hurt on that play. Yikes, not good. Holding his ankle or his leg or something. Not a, not a great sight, I will admit. We're fine, though. We're doing okay. Let's go. Good run. Get about halfway to the end zone. Oh, he almost got in. We're at the one-yard line. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Dislocated ankle for Brandon. I, good thing we have Marvin Harrison Jr. Good thing that trade happened because, one, we might not be here. Two, well, we need him right now. So, you know, that's okay. Not really. I, I'm a little dead inside, but it's okay. Good catch, idiot. Let's hope something happens here. Something good. Actually, let me, let me, let me clarify. That's pretty good. I'll take that as good. Dance, Mr. Running Back Witherspoon, sir. And we somehow give the ball all the way back to them. They're going to punt, though. So I'm going to jump in. Glad I stopped it where I did. I actually did not even mean to. I just happened to. Because I realized it was flying out of control. And I was not controlling anything. Not how I wanted this game to end. Uh, Marvin Mims is going to take it out from the whatever yard line that was. Not entirely certain. We're about the 22-yard line. Let's play. Come on. We ain't waiting. I got things to do. Mr. Mims got it over. All the way up to the 44. 22-yard gain. We'll take it. Some slight. I like this running right here. Quinn Miners is wide open to block anyone he wants to. Don't like the running back who's out there, though. Not a fan of that. Don't know what's up with that. We're down by three. We can get a field goal, but we also would like to score a touchdown. Either way. Nice little catch and run there from the running back. All right, let's see. We got a minute and a half. We got to start moving down the field a little more. Marvin Harrison on that left side looks really intimidating right now. To the defense, that is. Not to me, but Marvin Mims. The other Marvin. Going to take it all the way inside the five. Massive gain. Touchdown, baby. Back up, running back. Don't even know who it is. Something golden. Robert Golden, former safety of the Pittsburgh Steelers, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Probably not. He's like 40 now. All right, they're up by four. We got things to do. We'll let the ball get kicked off. I don't really care. They send it to the 25. Johnny Newton going to wreak some havoc here in the center. Make them use their timeouts and don't let them get outside. That's what I like to see. Van Ness on the inside. I like it. 
a big sack by Baron Browning getting home for the stuff. Lucas Van Ness going to run right inside again. Maybe free up Baron Browning on the one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Van Ness coming down the center and gets himself a sack in the Super Bowl as well. Fourth and 18 for the Detroit Lions. Looks like they're not going to be in a very good spot to win this game, but we like where we are. Tompkins with the pick. Quick and easy for the end of the game. That's it. That's all she wrote. Carter Cohen, QB1 of the Denver Broncos. We knew it. We just had Bo Nix as a filler, a stopgap. We knew what we were doing. We got here. Mr. Cohen will lead us to a Super Bowl victory. I don't know. Can we rub it in on one play? Can we take it all the way to the house on a 47-yard rushing touchdown? That'd be rather silly, if you ask me. All right, we can't, but we've had the stats just a hair, just a little bit. And the confetti, let it fall. The Denver Broncos have once again won a Super Bowl after, what has it been, five years? I mean, just since I've started this rebuild, four years, I think. Three years of Bo Nix, one year of Carter Cohen, and all of these players reap the benefits. Started off with passing on Jaden Daniels, started off with passing on J.J. McCarthy. However, now here we are. Carter Cohen, the Super Bowl winning quarterback of the Denver Broncos once again. Where does this put us? Look at that. That Lombardi trophy. I like how the shadows show the field and not any of the players standing right next to him, though. Very interesting. I'm assuming Cohen's our MVP. We'll get through it to the end of it. 71% completion, 300 yards, three touchdowns, no turnovers, I don't believe. Either way. We got him. Very nice little end to this rebuild. Take forever, two days, probably about, I'd say about eight hours worth of recording. So if you're still here, please make sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button. It gives me a, you know, it's a lot of benefit, a lot of help. And you know, it's hard to make these videos. It takes a long time. So we're going to go one more week just to see where we are. Get it all as a seven seed out of the AFC. A seven seed, that is. Either way, here we are. Recap. Carter Cohen wins MVP of the Super Bowl. And that's it. We had nothing else because we were not a very good team. However, I want to check a few more things out in terms of like the retirements. Did we lose anybody? DeForest Buckner, Brandon Cooks, Tress Way, Demarcus Lawrence, Kyle Juszczyk, Ryan Kelly, Taylor Moten, Trent Brown, Xavier Howard, Joe Tooney, Chris Jones. Chris Jones is gone. Amari Cooper, Kenny Moore, Jadavian Clowney, Deion Dawkins both retired after the Super Bowl win. There we go. That's all we lost. Jadavian Clowney and Deion Dawkins. Either way, thank you guys for watching. This has been a very long rebuild. I'm going to try to get this edited and posted for you within the next day or two. Either way, let me know what you think about this rebuild and what team you want to see next. Don't forget to check out w.gg for any of their products. Use code Shredder for 10% off your order, and I'll see you all in the next video.